Right, the referee today. By the way, the officials, all of the officials are from the Big Ten. Gene Calhoun is the referee. He's the one wearing the white cap. And the other officials, Robert Walker is the back judge. The headlinesman, Otto Poles. The line judge, Mike Nevin. Frank Strochia is the field judge. And Gil Marchman is the umpire. Just seconds away now as Northern Michigan will kick off from your left and Santa Clara will be going from your right to left here in the first quarter. We should see a lot of passing today. This is the quarterfinals of the Division II NCAA Playoffs 1980. Teeing up the ball for the Northern Michigan Wildcats. Number two is Matt Beatty. Beatty is the extra point kicker and also the kickoff man, but their field goal specialist is a man by the name of Tony Geller. He's number one. And I watched Geller, Pat. I stood behind him for a few minutes out on the field before the game. I was very impressed with the way he makes contact with the football. And in a contest like this, where we've got two very potent offenses, it could just come down to a field goal kicker, Brian Sullivan for the Broncos, or Geller for the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. Dropping back for the Santa Clara Broncos on the left, number 17, Mike Heinrich from Saratoga High School. On the right side, number 32 is Tyrone Forte. Forte also one of the starting running backs. The crowd vocally starting to rise to the occasion somewhat as Matt Beatty prepares to kick off. The crowd standing. We're underway. The kickoff is high, not too deep, though. Heinrich on the eight-yard line. It's a reverse play going to number 21, Jim Lane. He's trying to get a block. Lane gets to the 23, and it's first and 10 Broncos at that point. So the Broncos going for a little dipsy-doo right off the bat. Murray. Tried to get a block from Chuck Buckingham, number 75, on the far side of the field, Pat. And Buckingham, very wisely, had to lay off the block because he couldn't have done anything but throw a clip. Didn't want the penalty to start off this ball game. So it's a fair return off the reverse. Could have been better, but just simply, Buckingham just simply could not get the block, which might have sprung Lane for an additional 10 to 15 yards. Dave Alfaro has had an outstanding season in 1980, going for over 2,000 yards in the passing lanes. 12 touchdowns. 3-4 defense by the Wildcats. Jim Lane carries off the left guard spot, and he is stopped after a minimal gain. Making the primary hit for the Wildcats was Jim Chapanyuk, number 52. Jim Chapanyuk is a sophomore from Jenison, Michigan. The defensive line for the Northern Michigan Wildcats, Bob Yauk, Kurt Woyan, and Dennis Ware. And the linebackers, Zabrowski, that's a spelling, spelling bee name, Jim Chapanyuk. <laughs> and then Reggie Oliver and Tim Staus, the linebackers. Rayford, Taven, Taylor, and Herman, the defensive secondary. Parmalee on this side. Second down and nine for Santa Clara. Linebacker stunning a blitz. Here he comes. Alfaro gets a good block, and he throws one up the right side to Parmalee. He makes the catch. He's to midfield. Good blocking by the offensive line. There was a blitz coming that time. I think it was Jimmy Lane that picked the blitz up. Pat did a great job, and Alfaro stepped up inside it. Parmalee, of course, running one of his patented routes. Yes, it was Lane with the block, and Parmalee getting right in the seam, right in the middle of that zone. A little late rotating to the near side of the field. 24-yard gain for Santa Clara. Good touch on that pass by Alfaro. He had to get it over that defensive player. First and 10 on the 50-yard line. Parmalee was Alfaro's favorite target this season. On first down, Alfaro, a straight drop back. He's being run out of the pocket a little bit. He rifles one, almost intercepted by Tom Taylor, the strong safety. Pat, we've got to check ourselves a little bit today. This is kind of unusual from a broadcasting standpoint. We are opposite. And the reason we are is because the sun, especially this late in the year, sets rather low in the sky. There we are. The cameras are on the far side of the field, so we'll have to orient ourselves a little better. And when we said Parmalee was on the far side of the field, he was on our near side, <laughs> your far side, so we will adjust. That is Parmalee number 81 coming toward you at the bottom of your picture. It's a slot left this time with Fletcher inside of Parmalee. The tight end, Otterson, on the right side. Now in motion, Fletcher. Draw play, Gahey. Tony Gahey, the big pullback. He lumbers for eight yards. 
That's going to be short of a first down as the hit was made by Mark Zabrowski, number 91. Gahey is a converted tight end. He started this year, the first game against San Jose State, as the starting tight end. But then when Pettisclo was injured, Gahey moved to fullback, and he's done a great job this year. If Gahey had been able to stay on his feet, Pat, he didn't get through those wildcats right there, but Parmalee had knocked Jeff Herman right to the turf. Herman is only 5'9 and 178. Had his head buried in the turf out there about the 30-yard line. Day would have gone all the way. Herman, the free safety, was taken completely out. Third and two. The opponents of Northern Michigan have converted only 27% of their third down plays this year, and Jim Lane is going to be stopped, I believe, short of a first down as number 45 inside linebacker Reggie Oliver made a good hit. And I believe that is going to be shy of the first down. It's fourth down on the 41 of Northern Michigan. Get a kick out of Pat Malley. We we're talking about that Orange Bowl team in 1950. And I said, Coach, did you play on that? And he says, I'm not older than you. <laughs> we're, in a, we're in the same years. The wonderful class of 1953. Pat, of course, went to St. Ignatius High School in San Francisco. Just missed that Orange Bowl team, but... That was certainly something to aspire to as a Bronco football player in the 50s. And then it was later than that, of course, that Santa Clara first dropped football, then reinstated it. Pat, one of the great moves that's been made here on this campus. It means so much. And, of course, in the hands of Pat Malley, who has been here 22 years. This is his 22nd season. Remarkable record for a remarkable guy. In those 22 years, Bob, the Broncos have had winning seasons 17 different times. More important than that, Pat, all of the young men who have passed through this program have had a real educational experience and some lessons in living having played for Pat Malley. So we've got a fourth down. Pat Malley has chalked up 118 victories in his great coaching career over here in Broncoville at Santa Clara. Fourth down and a yard to go. Let's keep an eye on the running backs. Lane number 21, Gahey number 89. Will the Broncos risk a pass here? Northern Michigan stacking in an extra defensive lineman. The linebackers want to blitz. Alfaro sneaks. I think he has the first down. He does to the 39-yard line. That's a first down. The Broncos maintain the football here. They keep the drive alive. That's a clutch fourth down play. Right, ro right over Buckingham and Hoffman that time, Pat. As they move the Wildcats out of there, Alfaro did not make it by a whole lot, but he did make it. First and 10, Santa Clara. First drive of the game, 12 and a half minutes to play. First quarter. This is the Sports Channel. Pat Hughes and Bob Murphy with you. Alfaro, a long count. Hand off Jim Lane, off left guard. Lane is struggling for a pair of yards. It's not easy to run against this Wildcats defense. Remember, they're fourth in the country, stopping the run this year, allowing only 92 yards a game. It really is kind of interesting, Pat. There's an air of mystique to this game. These two schools are so widely separated in territory and geographical aspects. The Wildcats from Marquette, Michigan, way up in the northernmost part of Michigan, closer to Wisconsin, really, than they are to the main part of Michigan. They relate more to Wisconsin. Second down and eight for the Santa Clara Broncos. Play action. There's a blitz on. Alfaro gets rid of it through the hands of big number 89, Tony Gahey, on a circle pattern out of the backfield that time. I think Dave had to get rid of it a little bit before he wanted to, and I'm not sure Gahey was quite ready for it. Don Brown did a good job of rolling back, picking up that blitz, Pat, and Alfaro really had a little more time than he thought he had. Brown was very quick getting to the block. Gave him a little extra time, but I think Dave wanted to unload that one in a hurry and did rather inaccurately. Third down and eight now. Big play, a possible, a definite passing situation here as Fletcher and Parmalee are the wide receivers. And Parmalee at the top of the picture. Alfaro has plenty of time. He delivers. He's got it. Kurt Fletcher on one knee at the 25-yard line. That's a first down. A good pattern by Fletcher. It looked like it was zone coverage. And he got to the open space, and Alfaro just drilled it right to him. Had Gahey coming out of the backfield, and he caught the attention of that secondary. Fletcher made a deep curl, ran it up about 14, 15 yards, and then came back to make the catch. Good for a gain of about 12 yards. 
fully enough for the first down. Now it's first down at the 25. Broncos have been very impressive, Pat, and they've used up some time. 11.15 remaining. They've had it almost four minutes. Kurt Fletcher is a sophomore from Sunnyvale High School. He just made his 13th catch of the season. Page in there now on the far side. First and 10 on the 25 of Northern Michigan. Chapanik is blitzing. He's picked up. It's a draw play. Tony Gahey to the 18-yard line. Excellent call. As the linebacker Chapanik was coming, there's a penalty flag at the end of the play. And the draw went right by Chapanik, the inside linebacker who had, who had blitzed that time and was blocked out of the play nicely. going to be talking to Dave Alfaro, the Bronco captain, so we know that that penalty will be called on the Northern Michigan Wildcats. going to be... Right. Might have been a late hit, Murph. Flag is going to be picked up, and it's going to be paced off in the direction of the Northern Michigan goal. Maybe we'll get an explanation of that. There was dead ball, personal foul on the defense. First down. Let's watch the replay now. The linebacker coming, number 52 right there, and the draw went right by him. Gahey had some open space. And then let's see what happens at the end of the play. Maybe he was hit after he was down already. I don't think the referee is being disres disrespectful, but uh, he is facing the press box side, and our cameras once again are on the far side of the field. First and goal, Broncos on the nine-yard line. They started this drive on their own 24. Alfaro looking to the end zone. He goes to Parmalee, incomplete. Getting a hand on it was number 29 for Northern Michigan, Tim Staus, the outside linebacker. I'm not sure if he got a hand on it, but I know that he would have blocked the vision of Perry Parmalee, and so it's second and goal. He definitely saved the touchdown there, Pat. That ball was thrown beautifully right to the front corner of the end zone. Well-conceived pattern. Alfaro had some good zip on the ball, and I do believe that Staus got at least a fingertip on the ball to knock it off course. Second down and goal. The Broncos cannot get a first down. Score or else. Gahey and Lane in the I formation behind Alfaro. This is Jim Lane off right tackle. Five to the three, and he stopped there. Making the touchdown saving tackle was Tom Taylor, number seven. And boy, did Jim Lane almost lose that football, Pat. He was doing a little air dribble trick as he crossed the line of scrimmage. Was able to hang on to it. Looked for a moment like he might squirt into the end zone. It did. Watch Lane right here. He'll have his back to you, but you'll see him juggle with that football. He gets across the five and heads toward the goal line. Almost makes it. Comes up a little bit short. Fine saving tackle by Tom Taylor, number seven. Third down and goal. The ball on about the three and a half yard line. Alfaro, play action. He wants to throw into the end zone. He does. Touchdown to Phil Otterson. Phil Otterson makes the touchdown catch. And the Broncos lead six to nothing. Nice little roll action by Dave that time as he rolled to his right. Otterson on a little delay coming right across the end zone. Managing to get free, and it was a very soft throw by Alfaro. Watch him on the roll. He'll give the fake to Lane on the play action. Gahey, you see, flooding the far side of the pattern, and then Otterson comes in underneath it. Well-conceived pattern, Pat. Fine offensive display, and the Bronx have used more than five minutes on the clock. It's 9.51 remaining. The kick is up, and good. Time is out on the field with 9.51 to play. First quarter, the scoreboard showing Santa Clara 7, Northern Michigan nothing. Carl's Jr. Screen Test, the movie and TV trivia quiz, take nine. When a Carl's Famous Heart cheeseburger and a regular cup of Coca-Cola. That's best words. Oh. When a Carl's... Coca -Cola. Take 24. I think she means we could win a Carl's Famous Star cheeseburger and a Coke. How? Oh. <laughs> take three. By any Carl's Jr. cheeseburger, sweetheart, answer these questions. You don't win? Well, play it again. Now playing at a Carl's Jr. near you. Now, new to the South Bay area, another RTO store. RTO means rent to own by the week or by the month. Beautiful new brand name televisions and appliances. Rent to own a portable TV. Rent to own a new color console. Rent to own a new washer, dryer, or refrigerator. No credit checks, no long-term obligations, no repair bills. Rent can apply towards ownership, so call now. Rent today, own tomorrow. Call RTO Stores now in San Jose at 259-5755.
the touchdown play once again. The play action, Alfaro faking the handoff to Lane. That pulled in a linebacker a little bit, and then he dumped it over their heads to Phil Otterson, who makes the catch in the end zone for the touchdown. For Otterson, his sixth touchdown grab this season. You might have seen uh, Peter Rayford, the defensive back number eight there, Pat, attracted by Gahey and then surprised when the ball was thrown behind him to Otterson. A long kickoff coming down in the end zone. Delangelo will down it three yards deep. It's first and 10 Northern Michigan on their own 20 yard line. Brian Sullivan, just an outstanding all purpose kicker. He punts, kicks off, kicks the field goals and the extra points. He's the all time leading scorer at Santa Clara with 196 points. Pat, this could turn out to be a typical San Jose State, Utah State kind of a game where these two teams really get into a scoring derby trying to outscore one another with Kessel at the controls of a very volatile offense. Over 2,500 yards passing this year for Phil Kessel. Pitch out to Delangelo. He gets a block. He's to the 30. He's to the 40. Delangelo up the sideline, and he is out of bounds in Santa Clara territory. A 33-yard run. Delangelo averaging only 3.2 yards a carry in 1980. And on the first carry today, he rips off 33. Murph? He is from Ishpeming, Michigan. You spell I went back? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> That's well, about 15 miles from Marquette. Too easy, Murph. It's right here in front. All right, we'll get you. I'll get you a tough one. That was something of a surprise. First down play. First and 10, Kessel now back to pass. He pump fakes and then throws a long one. Seibel cannot get there. Double coverage for the Broncos as Andy Schatzman, number three, and Jeff Lane, the free safety, came over to help out as Scott Seibel, number 47, was barely, uh, he was trying to get open and he looked like he had about a half step. Oh yeah, he was clear enough, Pat. The ball was just overthrown. I like the way Kessel threw it. Kessel looks a little stiff arm throwing the ball, but he throws a very soft pass and certainly one that receivers can run under. The defense for the Santa Clara Broncos. Second down and 10. Kessel play action. Lance. Maybe a screen. Here it is. The pass goes to Mark Marana. Marana cuts inside and gets only maybe one yard. The Broncos, all week long, they've been watching the films of Northern Michigan. And Pat Malley said the other night at a press conference that this team throws more screen passes than any team we've seen all season. He ran into his own man that time as Tim Chapman, number 76, got in the way of Marana. Dave Padilla chasing him down. Ramona did a good job of filling in. That's tough to cover a screen when you've committed yourself to the blitz, but the Broncos, the pursuit to the ball was excellent that time. Pick up of two yards, it's third down and eight. Pitch out, number 34, George Works, trying to get outside. He does get outside, but he is stopped short of a first down by Jeff Harrison, the strong safety. There is a penalty flag on the play. It looked like the tackle on the far side might have jumped a little bit before, maybe a clip. If it's a clip, Pat, it would be against number 68, Jim Ingram. The flag was thrown right at him on the sweep. There was a great block. Or let's move that over. That was John Claxton. Don't want to get our teams mixed up here. It is going to be paced off against Northern Michigan, and the clip was on John Claxton, number 68. There was a great block thrown by Mark Marana. Personal foul, flipping on the offense. Same down, third down. In college football, they will not always give you the number of the guilty party, but you can rest assured it was John Claxton. It's third down and 20 as we come back live. Possible blitz situation here. There they go. Kessel, his favorite target is Seibel. The pass overthrowing Marana. Covering in the left flat was Mark McAtee, the right flat, offensively speaking, and it's fourth down, Bob. Scott was in the blitz that time, so was Mike Zinda, as they ran a little combination on Kessel and almost got to him, Pat. They just broke the timing of that pass pattern. There you see the punter, Tom Rinning. Renning has punted 55 times for a 36.3 yard average. He had an 80 yard punt earlier this season, but Brian Sullivan of Santa Clara had an 82 yarder. So some very outstanding punters in today's game. Harrison Dave. Harrison. Otterson is the short man, Pat, and he's a pretty good returner too. He's very agile. 
Let's see if the Broncos rush the punt. Not really, as Renning gets a low spiral that might be returnable. Harrison lets it bounce, and it goes into the end zone. So a good gamble, good judgment by Jeff Harrison that time. He saw that there was a line drive and had a lot of forward impetus, and so he just let it bounce into the end zone. I think the key to that defensive series, Pat, was the jamming of that screen pass on the blitz situation. The Broncos rallying to the ball. Dave Ramona, in particular, playing a key role over there, forcing a third and long situation that the Broncos finally convert to a punt. Now they've got the ball on the 20. And the last time they had it, they moved 75 yards in 13 plays and consumed more than five minutes on the clock to lead 7 to nothing. Eight and a half minutes to play, first quarter. 7 nothing, Santa Clara. Look at the people on the line of scrimmage for Northern Michigan. And they all come across. Nobody hiked the ball. Chuck Buckingham never snapped it. And let's see. Santa Clara drew them off, evidently, and it's going to be first and 15. That is Gene Calhoun, the, the ball, official. Full start on the offense. Five yards, first down. Remember, all of these officials today are from the Big Ten. The ball back to the 15 yard line. Northern Michigan. It's a little different for these officials, Pat, than some 88,000 people in Columbus, Ohio, or 105 in Ann Arbor, but I'll tell you, the game is no less important to the people involved, the players and the coaches and the students of these two fine universities. First and 15, Alfaro, a quick look in, Perry Parmalee, first down to the 33. An 18 yard gain, Parmalee made a beautiful catch as it was a little bit out in front of him, and now let's watch him on isolated. Nothing very complicated, Pat. That is called the quick slant. Take about two steps forward, and he's right in. He catches the ball almost cross-handed with a very fine pair of hands. Parmalee, a junior college All-American last year. In fact, he was the most valuable player in the Golden Gate Conference, as you can see. Barry Parmalee. Parmalee covered by Rayford on the far side of the field. First and 10, Santa Clara, the ball on their own 33-yard line. This is Tyrone Forte. He's going nowhere. Forte is hit almost as soon as he touches the ball by 52, Jim Shepanyuk. Tyrone Forte. And it's second down and 10. Jimmy Lane is being looked at by the Santa Clara trainers, Pat. Something around his nose or one of his eyes doesn't appear to be serious. Jimmy is not in there right now. You can see that he has contributed greatly to this Santa Clara offense. In fact, the top three running backs are all with very healthy averages. 4'9", four 4'9", nine, four nine, and 5.5. Second and 10, Santa Clara. Alfaro, play action. He wants to go back to the passing game. He steps up. There's a penalty flag down. Alfaro is going to try to run for it. He does get seven yards to the 40, but it might be a penalty against the Broncos. Let's wait to see here. Usually holding in that situation, illegal use of the hands. You can just about count on there. You see the indication by Gene Calhoun, the referee. Page was open that time. Dave Alfaro just simply missed him. He was in first down territory at about the 45. And in true second guessing fashion, Pat, if David unloaded the football, maybe the holding penalty would not have taken place and Broncos might have had the first down. Boy, it's easy to play that game from up here, isn't it? Oh, sure. I've never gotten hurt up here either. Well, one time I did, yeah. I fell on my way to the buffet table. Hands, the the knee up penalty, replay the down. <laughs> Trying to get around Sam Skinner. I know if he got there first, there wouldn't be much left for old Murph. <laughs> Seven minutes and 10 seconds to play first quarter. Santa Clara now looking at a second and 20 situation. Alfaro might try to get about half of the yardage on this play and then the other half on third down. Let's see what happens. Dave is going to pass. It's a four-man rush. A little dump off over the middle. Tyrone Forte. He is really cracked at the 37-yard line. That's going to be short of a first down as the collision between Taylor and Forte was just an amazing collision. Let's watch it again. Taylor is not afraid to hit, is he? He really picked Forte out, and he's going to take him head on right there. Taylor a little slow to get up. Flag drop, penalty on the Broncos. Probably a late hit. Although I didn't see it, Pat. Personal foul against Santa Clara. That's going to wipe out the game. That game was for about 14 yards. Taylor is escorted off the field across the way, Pat, so... 
we will have a new defender. They've got Jeff Herman still in there. Peter Rayford, number eight, is still in that defensive secondary. The new man is Brian Tabin. Penalties have been a big factor for both of these teams this season. We have a dead ball, personal foul on the offense. Third down. The Broncos were penalized 98 yards a game. Northern Michigan, 97 yards a game. Third and 21. This is the kind of a down, Pat, where the Broncos want to try to get the 21, but they don't want to give up the football in doing it. Got to be a little bit cautious. The Wildcats could be mixing that defense up here. They could be coming after Alfaro. It's easy to give up the interception in a situation like this. You got wide receivers both ways. Parmalee near side, Page far side. Santa Clara leads seven to nothing. Alfaro connecting with Bill Otterson for a touchdown pass. Alfaro third and long. He gets rid of the ball. He goes to Phil Otterson, cuts up inside, short of a first down to the 38. Another penalty flag down. Chuck Buckingham came up and he made the late hit again. That's going to be a penalty against the Broncos. And they have had two major penalties on the last two plays, and this might be a third. Well, that's that's almost that's a real 15-yard penalty, Pat, because it's going to take away from the punting situation that the Broncos were going to be facing anyway. It'll put Brian Sullivan, instead of punting from around the 25, he's going to be back to around the 10. And Northern Michigan will come out of this with pretty good field position, almost certainly. There you see Gene Calhoun pacing it off. 15 yards, and the ball is going to be placed at the 22-yard line. The punt will come from about the 10. And you can figure that with anything expectable at all, that the Wildcats will put the ball in place somewhere around the 50. With a return, they could even get the ball into Santa Clara territory. Brian, Brian Sullivan had his 82-yard punt this year against Chico State. They could use an 82-yarder right now. Got enough field for it. Number 10, Steve Ferguson back to you. Almost. Not quite. Huh? <laughs> Along with Mike. Here comes the rush. Not much of a rush. A wobbly spiral. It's coming down. It's going to be a fair catch by Steve Hermson. And as you predicted, Northern Michigan now has outstanding field position on their own 41-yard line. So penalties really inhibited the Broncos in that series. That was only about a 37-yarder, Pat. That was not one of Brian's best. Al Whitlock says 36, and we're going to go to the mat and wrestle over that one. <laughs> First and 10, Northern Michigan, the top passing team in the nation this season. They average about 270 yards a game through the air. Phil Kessel, number 11, the quarterback. Outstanding. He's from Madison, Wisconsin, which is the home of the University of Wisconsin. Kessel play action. He wants to go. He throws down the middle. A nice leaping catch by Jerry McEwen. It's fumbled, and now they say incomplete. Oh, wait a minute. They say he caught it, and he was down. No fumble. So the completion stands, and it's a gain of 19 yards for Northern Michigan. Jerry McEwen from Oshwabanon, Michigan. Makes his 40th catch this season. Kessel, good touch on that ball and a nice catch by McEwen. Jeff Lane did a great job on defense, Pat. And it appeared that there could be three things could have happened. It could have been called complete. It could have been called complete in a fumble or it could have been called incomplete. The officials chose complete with no fumble. First and 10, Kessel again. Another nice catch on the play by Scott Seibel. Here's the Northern Michigan team that we have heard about this season. Passing and passing very effectively. Two big plays of 19 and now 20 yards. And all of a sudden, Northern Michigan is knocking on the door at the 20-yard line of Santa Clara. We talked about the fine touch that Kessel puts on the ball, and he did it in spades that time, Pat. He threw a beautiful ball just barely over the outstretched fingertips of Tony Green. Dropped that ball right in the middle of the zone. Beautifully thrown ball. Come on, let's go, let's go! Kessel against the blitz, maybe a screen. It is, it goes to George Works. However, Works is stopped after a short gain on a nice defensive play by Dave Padilla, number 60. You might even want to credit Jeff Lane once again, Pat, with the initial hit there coming up. The Broncos so far have done a good job 
in blitzing situations are covering the screen. And boy, that is tough to do. You lose a few people when you commit them to the blitz. You'll see Lane come up now and make quick contact. Then he gets some help from Padilla. A gain of three yards, second down and seven. George Works. Works is the man they hand the ball off to when they get down close to the end zone because he has scored seven touchdowns rushing this year. Here's Delangelo, and Delangelo is hit by Dave Ramona, number 62. Dave has been the top tackler for the Broncos for the last two years. He had 105 tackles this season. Make it 106, Summer. Very heady football player, Pat. Of course, he's got those good genes. You know, his dad, Joe, was quite a player here for the Broncos. Talking about Levi's? <laughs> the other kind, Pat. Oh, biology okay. class. Okay. Remember biology class? Oh, yeah. Class? I, I got you. Joe, of course, played at Lincoln High School and later Santa Clara. Just a young kid. Third down now and seven after that outstanding defensive play by Ramona. Kessel has all day. Now Padilla running him out of there. O'Leary is after him. Padilla and O'Leary run him out of bounds on the 21-yard line. That's a loss of four yards. And so it's fourth down. The Broncos' defense gets tough. And coming on for the Northern Michigan Wildcats, will be Tony Geller to attempt a field goal. They'll spot it at about the 28-yard line. It's a 38-yard attempt here. This is just exactly the spot, Pat, where I was watching Geller kick. This is just where he was practicing before the game, and I saw him kick about nine in a row. Let's see what he can do now, 37-yard attempt. I say Joe Ramon is a young kid because he was in the same high school graduating class that Pat Malley and I were in. Just kids, Pat. All right. It's from the left hash mark, Geller. It's a chip shot, but he doesn't even get it hard, high enough. It looked like he kicked behind that ball. He hit the ground as he kicked. And the Broncos have held. It's still 7-0 Santa Clara. That ball landed feebly in the end zone that time. The 38-yard attempt went only about 30 yards. And so Geller disconsolately runs off the field. It's in that part of the field, Bob, that it's rather muddy. And the footing is rather tough. He might have slipped with his left leg that time as he was preparing to use his right foot to kick it. He didn't really make a good move at the ball at all, Pat. He, I don't think he got his left foot planted and certainly didn't make the same kind of a swing at it that he was making prior to the game. So the Broncos get some new life as they had their backs against the wall on defense and they held Northern Michigan. And now the Broncos have it. Tyrone Forte, a big hole, but it's... Closed up rather quickly. Forte gets four yards before Reggie Oliver slams him down. Second down and six for Santa Clara. First quarter, three minutes, 20 seconds to play. The clock is running. Santa Clara leads seven to nothing. The Broncos scored on their first possession. A pass from Dave Alfaro to Phil Otterson for three yards and the six points. Parmalee, far side, Fletcher, near side. Wide receivers both ways. Alfaro, in his career, has had 10 games of two touchdown passes or more. Tyrone Forte gets the first down. He was almost stopped at the 29-yard line, but he just ran out of the tackle. He was finally stopped by Peter, Peter Rayford, but it's a first down Broncos. He might measure that one, Pat. That one is pretty close. A lot of football still coming up on the Sports Channel. Saratoga High School secured a position in the CCS playoffs, Pat. They will be playing next Friday night in Spartan Stadium. Always one of the greatest games of the year as we watch the measurement. I can never forget that game last year between St. Francis and North Salinas. And when that little left-handed quarterback by the name of Naki. Mike Naki. And he was fabulous. That was one of the greatest comebacks I think I have ever seen. And I've seen a few over the years. The Stanford-UCLA game of a year ago comes to mind. And Mike Langford with that field goal in the big game a few years ago. And Sam Sakalakis with USC and O.J. Simpson and Ron Ayala and a few of those. But I think that in terms of just a sheer comeback, what St. Francis did last year was just literally unbelievable. First and 10 Broncos, as we were surmising, 31-yard line. Alfaro, quick drop back this time. Parmalee is kind of turned around a little bit, and it's incomplete. Perry Parmalee, a very interesting comment in the paper this week in the article by Wes Mathis of the San Jose Mercury, 
He said that when he runs a deep post pattern down the middle, he really doesn't run a defined pass pattern. He runs to an open area, and Alfaro and Parmalee communicate so well that they read each other during the play. Well, I think that's true, Pat. They've, Dave's thrown an awful lot of footballs at Perry over this season, and they get to kind of have a little ESP between them, I think. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. Hand off Tyrone Forte. Shoots up the middle, but he is stopped as the inside linebacker Reggie Oliver made the hit. The Broncos ran pretty well against Northern Michigan in that first drive. Remember, Northern Michigan allowing only 92 yards a game rushing this year, fourth best in the country. And they've given up only three rushing touchdowns. Greg Page into the game, replacing Kurt Fletcher. You have to believe he brings a play. This is a good possibility now for a screen or a draw. Third and long, third and seven. Page to the far side, to the near side, Parmalee. Alfaro rolls away from the pressure, and Parmalee cannot make the catch on a crossing pattern. Incomplete, it's fourth down. So the Broncos relinquish the football. You see Perry there kind of upset. Not upset at Alfaro, he's kind of upset at himself because he expects to make those one-handed catches, Pat. He's quite a competitor, you know. That ball was right out in front of him. There were defenders on all sides, and Perry might have been thinking a little bit of taking that head-on hit, as you sometimes do in those crossing patterns. Sullivan to punt the line of scrimmage, the 34-yard line. Dropping back for Northern Michigan now. Number 32, Delangelo, and number 10 is Hermson. Sullivan against very little pressure, a high spiral, twisting, fair catch called. That's a tough one to catch, and Delangelo makes it on the 37-yard line. That twisting ball, it's coming down point first. Well, and it's coming back, Pat, kind of like a catcher catching a foul ball, and you have to be a catcher. Those things do a loop, you know. They go up one side and come down the other, and that ball, when it doesn't turn over, when that spiral doesn't turn over, it, it almost has a tendency to come back to do a little loop, so it is a tough ball to catch. Hermson did a very sure-handed job. So here are the Wildcats of Northern Michigan try it again. Phil Kessel, the 29-yard punt. Huh? On their own 37-yard line, the Northern Michigan Wildcats. And off Delangelo, picks his way for three yards to the 40. Garfield Scott, Greg O'Leary, and Mike Zinda collaborate on the tackle. Second down and seven. Nearing the end of the first quarter with a minute 20 to play on the Sports Channel. Seven to nothing, Santa Clara leads. Quarterfinal Division II NCAA football playoff action. That's a mouthful, Murph. Yeah, you got it all out <laughs> and in the right order, Pat. <laughs> there you see Kessel against Eastern Illinois. Not a bad game against the top-ranked Division II team. Here's the catch on the play by McEwen. And McEwen gets a first down to the 50-yard line. Just a little quick out pattern, and Kessel, you can tell he has done that several times this year. Laid it right on the money. McEwen kind of laid those hands open even before Kessel threw the football, Pat. He threw it right between the right hand and the left hand in that little target. Very accurate thrower. Kessel in 1979, the total offense champion in Division II. He's five for seven for 54 right now. The ball is right at midfield. Kessel with Delangelo and works behind it, but Kessel's going to throw. A quick pattern, incomplete because the receiver, Greg McLean, slipped and lost his footing, and he could not make that cut to the outside. Broncos are committing Zinda to the blitz about half the time, Pat. They're trying to put four hats on the passer whenever they possibly can. Zinda was coming from the far side that time. He never had a chance to get to Kessel, but he keeps the linemen and the deep backs occupied just thinking about that blitz. Zinda lined up on the line now. Zinda blitzed a lot this year. He had 17 individual sacks. Kessel to McLean again, incomplete. Little delay blitz that time. That was nicely done. The Broncos really disguised that. That was Tony Green coming up through the middle on about a half a count delay, Pat, and nobody put a hand on him. And you had to believe that Kessel saw him and heard him. Unloaded that ball a little more quickly than he wanted to. Not very accurate with it. Interesting that Kessel came back with the exact same play on second down that he had on first down. The quick out pattern to McLean on the right side. 
one thing he didn't count on was the Broncos changed the defense up a little bit now. Now they've got Zinda on one side in the linebacking position. Mark McAtee on the wide side of the field. McLean in motion as Kessel retreats. He's got good blocking. He's being run out of the pocket, still looking for a receiver. Gets away from O'Leary. He throws. He's incomplete as Marana had it in his stomach, and he lost the ball because he tried to run before he had it, Murph. And the Broncos lost Marana, Pat. There were all kinds of players around there. The closest was perhaps Chris Lundy. But Marana was wide open at the 30-yard line in first down territory. Kessel did a great job of avoiding the blitz. And by the time it was over, Greg O'Leary was the last one to have a shot at him. The blitzers were blitzing for their second and third time around. It's like standing <laughs> on a street corner That's in right. Times Square. If you stay there long enough, everybody passes. <laughs> it's fourth down. The Broncos stop. Northern Michigan, three straight incompletions. Here's a beautiful high spiral. It bounces into the end zone with 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Broncos will have it on their own 20. You know, Murph, this Northern Michigan team, they came up with one of the most amazing turnarounds in college football history, truly astonishing. In 1974, they were 0 and 10. The next year, 1975, they were 10 and 1, and they were champions of Division II in the NCAA. Incredible, and they've been strong ever since, Pat. And a lot of that, of course, you can credit to Bill Rademacher. Bill Rademacher was a wide receiver on the New York Jet World Championship team with Joe Namath a few years ago. That's right. He was a backup to George Sauer and Don Maynard. Here's Jim Lane outside left, follows Gahey, cuts inside of Gahey's block, and Lane gets to the 25 on what most assuredly will be the final play of the first quarter. At the end of one period, the scoreboard shows the Santa Clara Broncos 7 and the Northern Michigan Wildcats nothing. You're about to see Ford pickups make six-cylinder EPA fuel economy history. For 1981, Ford breaks this mileage barrier with the best gas mileage ratings ever achieved by a six-cylinder pickup. And here's another breakthrough. The first and only automatic overdrive option in any eight-cylinder truck. When your speed reaches about 40, it automatically shifts into overdrive and your engine runs slower. Only Ford has V8 automatic overdrive. For 1981, tough Ford pickups make a big breakthrough. See the best-selling truck in America at your... Almost makes a one-handed miraculous catch, but can't quite do it. Double coverage, in fact, triple coverage that time, as Tom Taylor, Jeff Herman, and Brian Tabin were all surrounding Parmalee. Here it is again. Pat, I think that is exactly what you were talking about earlier. It was Parmalee running what started to be a basic up and in, a very short post pattern. He saw the deep route open and just accelerated into it. Alfaro read that, tried to throw the ball out in front of him so he could run underneath it. He almost did. It's going to be second down and 10 for Santa Clara after the incompletion. In that first quarter, Santa Clara had 99 yards in total offense. Northern Michigan had 86. On second down, Alfaro, a screen pass. It's to Forte coming back against the green. What a well-conceived play. He is to the 50-yard line. What a very innovative play, Murph. I don't know if I've ever seen one quite like that before. Staus and Taylor made a fine stop on the play, Pat. It was really nicely done. A little misdirect action all the way. You see Alfaro coming back, and it's the little delay. And boy, has he got some quickness. Tyrone Forte. And Forte. what a shame that his brother had to miss this season, Pat. Troy, we know, watches these telecasts, and we'll look for Troy to come back next year. The total offense figures in the first quarter. Big gain for Santa Clara, 19 yards and a first down. Alfaro pitches to Jimmy Lane. He had a 200-yard rushing game against Northridge. He hurdles over a man to the 45. Lane, 207 yards against Northridge and 131 yards against San Francisco State in the Broncos' last two games this year. And of his total of 577, he got 448 of those yards in the last three games. Get a kick out of Garfield Scott, the big defender on the sidelines. Patty is not only a fine defensive player, he is the best cheerleader the Broncos have when they're on offense. <laughs> he's got that towel whipping around, and he's up and down those sidelines. He's a lot of fun. Second down and five for the Santa Clara Broncos. Santa Clara ranked number seven in the country. 
Northern Michigan number two. Page far side. That is him, you see, right in the middle, upper middle of your picture. Parmalee just inside at the bottom of your picture. On second down and five, a blitz is coming out. Faro rifles it over, throwing Otterson, who was open down the middle. But Alfaro didn't have a lot of time to think about that pass because those defensive linemen and linebackers were charging him. Nice looking pattern that time. Page running a sideline right route on the far side of the field. Parmalee up into the sideline on the near side. And Otterson streaking for the middle, wide open. Pat, that would have been a six-pointer, except for the fact that the ball was overthrown. You can be sure the Broncos will come back. Maybe not this play, but they'll come back soon and try to do that again. Third down at five. Neither team has scored Blitz. since the first possession of the game when Santa Clara tallied. Making the catch is Perry Parmalee. Parmalee is crunched down, but it's a first down, Santa Clara. On the 35, Parmalee, kind of a comeback pattern. Made the catch, a big play. Jimmy Lane once again picking that blitz up, Pat. He's done that a couple of times today. That was the middle linebacker for Northern Michigan as Parmalee takes a ferocious hit right there by Tommy Taylor. But Jimmy Lane, when you talk about those backs, you don't always want to talk about just the rushing statistics. They have to protect that quarterback and block for one another. Jimmy Lane sure did a job that time. It's first to 10 on the 34-yard line of Northern Michigan. Santa Clara leading 7-0, early second quarter. A quick pitch to Jimmy Lane. He's picking him up and laying him down to the 30. He gets to the 25-20. He is to the 15 and inside the 15. Jim Lane. There was some good blocking, but he did a lot of that on his own. First to 10. The big move was on Taylor, Pat. Taylor is the fellow who just hit Parmalee a minute ago. And you will see Lane make a very fine move inside Taylor as we get over here. It is right there. Buckingham helped slightly with a little brush block. And that enabled Lane to get inside the 15, almost to the 13, where the Broncos have a first down. Very, very impressive. Jim Lane, a senior from St. Mary's High School in Oakland. He had the winning touchdown this year in a game against UC Davis. Page far side, Parmalee near side, now splitting even further. Alfaro looks over that defensive line, calls the signals. Play action, Alfaro looking end zone. He's in trouble, fumble on the play. Recovered by the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. It was apparently picked up by number 41, Kurt Boyan. A junior from Wausau, Wisconsin, a big play. As Alfaro was sacked, the Wildcats had 44 sacks as a team this year, Bob. Alfaro was just desperate trying to unload this football. You're going to see the fumble pop right out. Wayne's going to jump on it. Big Gary Hoffman wrestled him for it, Pat, but that was long after the fact. There you see a picture right there of number 41, Kurt Wayan. First and 10. And off up the middle, Delangelo gets across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. For a gain of five yards, it's second down and five. That's the first turnover suffered in the game today. Bill Kessel looking over at the sidelines as the wide receivers have been exchanging and also the running backs bringing plays in from the bench. Kessel has had at least one touchdown pass in nine straight games coming into today's affair. Second and five, Kessel, straight drop. And a diving catch by Scott Seibel for an apparent first down at the 30-yard line. Seibel, the real bread and butter receiver this year for Northern. Split situation that time with Ramona giving it a go. The Broncos will kind of alternate between Ramona, number 62, and Tony Green, number 53, on the inside blitz. Often come with the outside man, Mark Zinda. Almost always they have McAtee on the wide side of the field, and he plays contained. Play action, Kessel. Looks good. He delivers. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. 
Kessel was going for Seibel, but also in that same area was Jerry McCune. You don't really want to have two offensive wide receivers in the same vicinity as the Wildcats did on that play, Bob, I don't think. Chris Lundy on the defense, Pat, uh, would have been in the interception area if that deflection had gone up in the air at all. It was kind of a rapid, quick deflection, not the kind you can run under. But Lundy was there. There you see him, number 23. Lundy, a former wide receiver at Santa Clara, so he knows what those offensive players are thinking about when they go out for a pass. Lundy converted from offense to defense. Second down and 10. Another play action. Kessel delivers, making the catch is McLean up the sideline. He is driven down by Jeff Lane. As Greg McLean makes the catch, Kessel put that ball right on the money, Murph. You know, Pat, I think you have to adopt a certain psychology when you're playing against this football team because Kessel throws so well and he has so many outstanding receivers. McLean is certainly only one of them. I think you have to adopt the attitude that they are going to keep doing this. So you stop them once, you stop them twice, you stop them eight or nine times. You better get ready to stop them 28 or 29 times because the football is going to be in the air a lot this afternoon for 32-yard game. Top passing team in the country, the Wildcats are. Kessel again, the play action. He goes up top again and overthrows Jerry McCune down on about the 10-yard line where he was guarded by Jeff Harrison. You know, Kessel has that high arm action, Patty. He does not throw unlike Jim Plunkett. That's right. And Jim, of course, has been throwing so well for the Raiders of late. Jim, I think, is, over the years has gotten a little higher with his right arm, and Kessel has that same kind of action. Throws a very tight spiral, but often throws it so softly that his receivers have trouble dropping it. He lays it right in there. One thing I've noticed on his play action, though, he fakes with uh, the bare hand, which a lot of coaches don't like. They like you to fake with that ball. On second down, that pass completed to Marana. Marana has a first down inside the 20. Well, I think we're going to see more of that, Pat. He's been going to his wide receivers with moderate success. Now he comes back underneath the coverage on a little delay pattern, just a little circle route by Marana. And Marana runs it nicely. He is forced out of bounds on the near side of the field by Jeff Lane, number 31. But now with the Broncos secondary retreating into pass coverage, that little underneath pattern is one we're probably going to see a lot more of. It's first and ten. The Wildcats of Northern Michigan are driving. The Broncos, a three-man rush. The ball tipped into the air and almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. It fell in front of a diving Dave Ramona. I think it was McAtee. I always guess McAtee because he's about 6'5". Uh, he, he has... Uh, Long appendages, Murph. Uh, yeah, arms too. And he's uh, <laughs> played his football at El Molino High School up in Forestville, California. For Chan Castleberry. Chan Castleberry is one of the few high school football coaches, Pat, who is still playing the single wing and winning. It's second down and ten after that incompletion. Kessel has plenty of time. He steps up. He's got a completion to Marana. Marana inside the 10 for another first down. Harrison made the tackle, but the Wildcats are driving. This is their deepest penetration of the day. Santa Clara leads 7-0, but that lead is growing more and more tenuous as this drive continues to barrel down the field. What we're seeing here with Kessel, Pat, is a little of what we saw all season long from John Elway. Kessel, obviously a fine thrower. We know that. We knew that from the films we've seen and from the scout reports, but he's got those quick feet. He eludes the pursuit, gives his receivers a second and sometimes a third chance. Outside left is George Works. He is pulled down by Greg O'Leary on a super defensive play. O'Leary, the tackle on that side, just would not let the running back get around him. Let's watch it again. Beautiful Solid tackle. Hit. Very solid hit over there for support, Larry Aurelia. Now the ball is outside the 10-yard line. It's second and goal still. Let's watch the linebackers now. Zinda is 52. McAtee is 65. Timeout called by Northern Michigan. 
the Wildcats trailing seven to nothing. Once again, the Santa Clara score came the first time the Broncos had the ball on a 75 yard drive in 13 plays. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back with the Broncos leading seven to nothing. Now, new to the South Bay area, another RTO store. RTO means rent to own by the week or by the month. Beautiful new brand name televisions and appliances. Rent to own a portable TV. Rent to own a new color console. Rent to own a new washer, dryer, or refrigerator. No credit checks, no long-term obligations, no repair bills. Rent can apply towards ownership, so call now. Rent today, own tomorrow. Call RTO stores now in San Jose at 259-5755. People used to buy foreign cars for quality, value, price, fuel economy. But in three of the last four years, more foreign car owners have traded their cars for Chevrolets than any other make. Because they can get quality, value, price, and fuel economy in a Chevrolet. Come home to your Chevrolet dealer. The foreign exchange is on. Back here at Buckshaw Stadium, Northern Michigan is on the ten and a half yard line of Santa Clara. Second and goal, Kessel is back. He lobs one into the end zone. It's complete for a touchdown to Jerry McCune. Jerry McCune makes the touchdown catch, his eighth of the year. For Kessel, his 22nd touchdown toss. Bob? Seibel and McCune that time, Pat, both split, uh, spread to the far side of the field, running a pattern in combination. That was Seibel running outside, McCune running inside, and then stretching his pattern as a beautifully thrown ball by Kessel goes for the touchdown. Nicely done. Now we'll see if the Wildcats of Northern Michigan can tie it up on the kick. Here's a straight ahead kicker, Pat. We don't see too many of those anymore. That's right, Matt Beatty, 5'11 senior from Salt St. Marie, Michigan. Holding the ball, number 14, Phil, or, uh, Tom Bertoldi. The kick is up, and we got a tie game. Time is out on the field. Nine minutes and 27 seconds to play in the first half, and it's 7-7. Seven to seven. We told you it was going to be a good passing battle today. Well, in the first half, Dave Alfaro of Santa Clara has passed for one touchdown, and his counterpart, Phil Kessel of Northern Michigan, has also struck for a TD toss. Pat Malley on the Santa Clara sidelines. One of the biggest games the Broncos have had in years. In fact, the last bowl appearance for Santa Clara was 1950, 30 years ago. And although this is technically not a bowl game, it is a playoff situation. The quarterfinals of the NCAA Division II in 1980. On the other side, Bill Rademacher, the head coach, as Matt Beatty, who just kicked the extra point, prepares to tee it up. Pat, you talk about Kessel and his touchdown passes. That's 10 straight games now. The touchdown pass, there you see it, 83 yards in nine plays. And remember, Bob, it came after the fumble by Santa Clara. It's amazing how many times a turnover will lead to the touchdown for the other team. Number 17 for Santa Clara is Mike Heinrich, and number 32, Tyrone Forte. Beatty is ready to kick it off. It's all tied seven to seven. The kick is not too deep to the five yard line. Mike Heinrich comes up the middle 15, 20 and he's upended there. The tackle on the play by number 55, Tom Kell on the special teams for the Wildcats. So now it's up to the Broncos to see if they can shift the momentum, which has eluded them here in the last five minutes or so. If Heinrich uh, had been a little quicker on the return, Pat, he had a pretty good hole there. He had a fine block thrown by Scott Gordon upfield. He was just a little bit late getting to that hole. But the Broncos nonetheless have pretty good field position as they send Page to the far side, Parmalee to the near side. The only two losses for Santa Clara this year to San Jose State and Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Jim Lane cuts inside his blocking and wedges his way to the 26-yard line for a pickup of three yards. Second down and seven. Broncos continue to try to get some ground game going. The wide receivers shuttle in and out. Fletcher back into the game, replacing Page. Bringing some play information into the quarterback, Dave Alfaro. 
These two teams are really evenly balanced. Pat, isn't it interesting? Separated by some 3,000 miles. Different leagues, different kind of competition, but yet so evenly balanced. Very similar styles, really, Murph. Good point. Alfaro throws as he's hit. Parmalee makes the catch on the 45. He's out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Parmalee had to reach down to make that catch. He's six feet three inches tall, and he caught that at about knee level. Casanova and Zabrowski really gave Alfaro all he wanted back here. That is 91, Zabrowski from the backside just as he threw it. Number 63, Dennis Ware also got in there. But Parmalee ran under that dead quail of a pass, Pat. Looked like my old pal Jerry Hamilton unloads his whole arsenal and they keep flying, those ducks. <laughs> Says he only shoots at the tough ones. <laughs> That's what that pass looked like. Parmalee set a record 264 yards receiving against Cal Poly earlier this season. Now hand off to Gahey, big hole to the 40. Tony Gahey to the 36 yard line. That is a 16 yard gain. First the 10 Broncos. And that pendulum of momentum swinging back in favor of the Broncos. What blocking that time yeah. by the Bronx. Nice little trap, Pat, as Buckingham and Goodrow combine on the trap. Bordnave coming the other way as they opened up the whole middle that time. Beautifully done. The Broncos causing a little excitement here as the fans come alive. Got a good crowd here today. Gahey looks like he has successfully rehabilitated a knee injury which he sustained against San Francisco State two weeks ago. Gahey again. Scrambles for about four down to the 32. Second and six. Just under eight minutes to play in the first half. It's all tied seven and seven. Little influence play that time, Pat, as the quarterback, Alfaro, looks as if he's pitching wide to Jimmy Lane. And instead, on the end of the pitch, he simply bellies the ball to Gehi. What they're trying to do, of course, is influence the linebackers so that they can get a little position on the block and open up that middle. Did a fair job. Got about five. They're double covering Parmalee this time. Let's see if Alfaro still tries to go to him or if... Greg Page is the intended target. Well, it's a running play. Lane outside right to the 30, and he is cut down there. Nice play by Reggie Oliver. Reggie, a very active inside linebacker, number 45 for the Wildcats. And it's third down and four. Big play coming up, but this is really not out of the range of Brian Sullivan, the very fine field goal kicker for Santa Clara. He's warming up that leg on the sideline at this very moment. The end zones are just pure white. They look like they could be in Marquette, Michigan, and covered by snow. There was to be some lettering, Pat. When we got here earlier today, they were trying to letter them, and I guess they decided, ah, oh, forget it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't spell Wildcats, maybe. <laughs> That's right. Gahey on a draw. Close to a first down to the 26. The players are motioning first down, but we'll wait for the official, and they say first down. Gahey took Tom Bordenave right with him that time. Tom, of course, went to Bellarmine High School just like his dad, Don, did a few years ago. Don also was a very fine football player here. The blocking of that offensive line of Santa Clara, Hoffman, Bordenave, Buckingham, Goodrow, and Brown doing a fine job. Doesn't Pat look relaxed? <laughs> First and 10, Santa Clara on the 26-yard line. Dave Alfaro, another handoff to Gehi, a real workhorse in this drive. To the 23, a gain of three yards, second and seven. Under six minutes now to play in the first half. Jim Goodrow tried to give him a little better block, Pat, than he was able to deliver. But Gehi made the most of it. I'm really happy to see Tony out there running as well as he is. When we saw him pick up that knee injury in the San Francisco State game, I was just certain that he was through for the year. But he's back running strongly. The backs are now split behind Alfaro. They've had four straight running plays. It's time for a pass. Alfaro delivers. Parmalee makes a comeback catch to the 10. He is down to the eight-yard line. What a brilliant pattern that was by Parmalee. He was double covered. One man was taking his short pattern. The other man was dropping back deep. 
Parmalee simply came back inside of the front defender. Watch the fingertips here, Pat. He's going to catch it right on the very tips of his fingers. That's Brian Saban, who missed him right there. Then he gets a little help as Mercer Bryson, number three, comes in to make the hit. Broncos have it set up on the threshold of the goal line. First and goal for the Broncos. That play, a 15-yard gain. Now Page, the one wide receiver to the far side. Double tight end. Fumble. It's loose in the end zone. It's recovered by Northern Michigan. They get the ball on the 20-yard line. So for the second time in the second quarter, a long Santa Clara drive is halted on a fumble. That ball was fumbled right at the snap by Al Faro as he and Buckingham had trouble getting together on the snap. And then the ball was actually healed almost as if it was being kicked out of a rugby scrum, Pat, as the ball was <laughs> healed into the end zone, eight yards behind the Michigan defense. They fall on it for a harmless touchback. The ball's brought out to the 20, and the Broncos, on two successive series of downs now, or possessions, have seen the ball fumbled away. One results in the touchdown that ties it at 7-7. Plenty of time left for a drive for the Wildcats here. A three-man rush. Kessel pump fakes. Being run out of there by O'Leary. He misses him. Kessel's going to run, and he gets out of bounds judiciously for a two-yard gain because he saw Tony Green hovering in his path, and Kessel smartly stepped out of bounds. I think, an eighth. I think it would be fair to say right now, Pat, that Kessel is giving the Broncos a lot of trouble with his footwork and his agility back there. You're going to see him outdistance Zinda. You're going to see O'Leary miss him. Still looking for receivers as he finally runs out of bounds. But a defense can get pretty weary when you're chasing a quick, agile quarterback like Phil Kessel. I'm very impressed with his, his agility and his concentration on the receivers downfield while he's scrambling. Kessel play action. Being chased by Padilla. A little dump off to George Works. 35 to the 40 and out of bounds at the 41. Harrison runs him out of bounds. Kessel again against a stiff rush. Unloaded it. A little short pass to George Works. George is from Davidson, North Carolina. Just a sophomore. And that's a big first down to the 43. A gain of 20 yards. That's pretty much what we were just talking about scrambling and still knowing at the same time where his receivers are and how to find them. It's interesting, Bob, because Kessel this season didn't scramble that much. He lost 187 yards on sacks and whatnot, but he only gained 59 yards rushing, but his footwork has been a big key in this first half. He's already passed for 158 yards today. First and 10, Northern Michigan. Kessel throwing on the run. Scott Seibel makes a beautiful catch just before going out of bounds on the 39. Another big play. This time, 18 yards on the game. Seibel has been a thorn in the side for the Broncos all day. Might have been a little confusion on that play, Pat, as there is a soccer sideline that runs right down that side of the field that's about two or three yards inbound from the football out of bounds line. And if there's a local field advantage, the Broncos should have it, but Seibel seemed to know more about the field than the Broncos when he made that catch, didn't he? He really did. Slot left this time, McCune inside of Seibel. First and 10. The Wildcats are really moving through the air now. A pass down the middle, Seibel makes a beautiful catch as Lane hits him almost upon contact. But Seibel somehow hung on to the football. Another first down, a pickup this time of 19 more yards to the 20. Don't you just love this kind of football? It's great. I wonder if maybe we could trade Bill Rademacher to Michigan for Bo Schembechler and a third round draft choice. <laughs> maybe Michigan could throw the football like this. I guess they don't have to. They're coming to the Rose Bowl anyway, and they draw 105,000 people every time they put air in the football. First and 10 on the Bronco 20. This has been a quick drive. George works outside. He is cut down beautifully by number seven, Jeff Harrison. And now a pooch comes onto the field. A dog is running aimlessly on the 20-yard <laughs> line. That dog was out there earlier before the game chasing the Northern Michigan wide receivers when they were running pass patterns. And Bill Rademacher thought that maybe 
things had been turned against the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. That's pretty tough to run those pass patterns when you got that black mongrel nipping at your heels. I've heard of a red dog, but this is a black dog yeah, here, Murph. That's right. <laughs> He's yeah. being chased by a red dog for Santa Clara <laughs> out there right now. <laughs> Well, he's the le leading rusher in the first half, I think, with his performance in these last couple of minutes. Mark Marana is trying to make friends with him. He says, go fetch, and the dog says, nope, I got a better idea. I'm the, the center attraction right now, and I kind of like it. Anybody got a stick? Here, boy. Well, now he's chasing Mike Delangelo. He only wants to play. See, all the dogs in northern Michigan are frozen now. These guys, <laughs> they, they come out in the spring. These guys haven't seen a dog move around like that for a few weeks. Now, number three, Andy Schatzman of the Broncos is chasing him. He's getting tired. He's kind of like the Bronco defense right now. His tongue is hanging out a lot. And he is still on the field. Pat Malley sent that dog out to give his defense a rest. I'm almost sure, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the play of the day. Jeff That's, Harrison. Oh, yeah, that a boy, Jeff. That's as good a tackle as Jeff has made all afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and the Adam. crowd responds. Ah, boy, Jeff. He's our grow pup player of the week, <laughs> Jeff Harrison. <laughs> Well, let's see if that uh, delay stalls the momentum of Northern Michigan here. Three minutes, 37 seconds to go in a rather elongated first half because there have been lots of incompleted passes. Kessel now 13 of 21, 195 in the first half. Three out of three in this drive for 47 yards. Second down and nine on the 19 of Santa Clara. Kessel play action, looking for Seibel in the end zone. He's well guarded. O'Leary sacks him. O'Leary and Padilla. Garfield Scott was also in there, but the three defensive linemen really put on a strong pass rush that time. And you can almost credit secondary coverage for part of that sack because I saw Kessel look for Seibel in the corner of the end zone, but he was well guarded by Lundy. And so it's now third and 19. That was good defensive play, Pat. They not only flushed him, but they contained him at the same time. And the dangerous thing with a quarterback like Kessel and his quickness is if you flush him, you may put him in a situation where he's going to hurt you more by the run than he is with the pass. Obvious passing situation. No blitz. The pass complete to Morana. He fumbles it. It's loose on the field, and they say incomplete. Morana never had the ball long enough before he was hit on the play by Mike Heinrich. Number 17. Mark McAtee, number 65, also there, Pat. McAtee, the linebacker on that side, has the responsibility for the first man out of the backfield, which is Marana. And he played it pretty well. That's when they put those X's and those O's up on that chalkboard. They take that old 65 and they say, now when the first guy comes out, you've got to be alert for him. That's pretty much what he did, wasn't it? It might have been Jeff Harrison instead of Mike Heinrich, number 17. It was number seven who made that hit. As now it's going to be a field goal attempt. Tony Geller, a 46-yard attempt. It's up. It is going to be good. Just barely long enough. A 46-yard field goal by Tony Geller. Timeout with 2.23 to play. First half, the scoreboard shows Northern Michigan 10, Santa Clara 7. back warm memories of yesteryear with our family album by Happy Jack's Village Square Dance Band. Cats, Geller, the 46-yard field goal. On each of the last two drives, the Broncos have moved the ball very proficiently, but each time they fumbled deep in northern Michigan territory. Two great drives by the Wildcats, 83 and then 80 yards. The first one for the touchdown, the second for the field goal. Parmalee to the near side, Page to the far side. Parmalee makes the catch on the 40. He's really cracked there, making the hit on Perry. Was Tom Taylor and Mercer Bryson. And it's a first down. The ball 
is going to be spotted on the 37-yard line. The clock is stopped momentarily while the chain gang gets up into the proper place. Here's that pass again, a beautiful pass by Alfaro to Perry Parmalee. Parmalee now in the first half has a total of six catches for 107 yards. It's a good observation, Pat, that you just made, that Broncos' problem is not moving the ball, it's holding on to it after they've moved it. Alfaro looking to Fletcher, now being run out of there. The receivers have to run a second pattern. Otterson. Alfaro throws as he is hit, and it's incomplete as number 91, Mark Zabrowski, a blitzing linebacker, crunched Alfaro as he was releasing it, and Alfaro is a little bit shaken up, Bob. Alfaro had Otterson wide open, and he saw him, Pat, but he was behind him, and he was running so quickly to his left with pursuit from behind that he just simply could not afford to stop and try and get the ball to him, so it was one of those anxiety tests. And instead of, I'm sure when he took his arm back, he wanted to try and angle the ball to Otterson. Instead, he just threw it out of bounds. Second down at seven, or uh, second down at 10, rather, with one minute, 47 seconds to play in the first half. Alfaro again, dropping back and looking and delivering to Tony Gahey, making the catch on the 47-yard line, short of a first down. And he gets out of bounds to stop the clock, a minute 43 remaining. Bob Murphy is gonna be heading down to the field. He'll be talking with at least one head coach as he leaves the field at halftime. Now Greg Page checks out of the lineup. Coming in is Kurt Fletcher for Santa Clara. A key third down play here, third and four. Because if they fail here, there's still plenty of time for the Wildcats to come up with a counter drive of their own. Third and four. Alfaro looking for his favorite target, but goes to Gahey, makes a catch. He is gonna be ridden out of bounds for a first down on the 46 yard line. The tackle by Tom Taylor. Gahey makes the catch. Remember, Tony is a former tight end, so when he runs a pass pattern out of that backfield, it's pretty familiar territory for him. Gahey picks up the first down on the 45-yard line. Pat Malley looking on impassively from the Santa Clara sidelines. Now Tyrone Forte is lined up as a wide receiver to the near side, number 32 at the bottom of your screen right here. Alfaro goes to Forte across the green to the 35-30. He is to the 24-yard line. That's a first down Santa Clara. That is why Forte was lined up as a wide receiver. That's the same play they ran earlier with Forte coming across the green over the middle. It's almost a delayed screen pass. Forte picked up some good blocking and also came up with a nice jaunt of his own. So now the Broncos have quickly driven down the field. Still a minute 26 to play, first half. No running plays so far in this drive. Alfaro, play action, over the middle, Phil Otterson, 15, he's to the 10, out, Otterson to the eight yard line. The clock is stopped, that's another first down. A minute 13 to play, still plenty of time for the Broncos here. They are lining up without a huddle, though, with time somewhat at a premium. Number 90, Vince Canello, a sophomore from Bellarmine High School, replaces Perry Parmalee on this play. The clock is running again. A minute 10 to go. The Broncos on the eight-yard line. Alfaro has one touchdown pass already today. Jim Lane, he is upended as soon as he gets the ball on a fine defensive play by Dennis Ware, number 63. And now the Broncos will call a timeout with 56 seconds to play in the first half. Alfaro comes over to take a deep breath and also to chat with the head mentor of Santa Clara, Pat Malley, in his 22nd season as head coach for the Santa Clara Broncos. Dave Alfaro today, 13 out of 21, 186 yards and the one touchdown to Phil Otterson of three yards and that came at the end of the first drive of the day for Santa Clara they got on the scoreboard first they led seven nothing in the first quarter but in the second period the Wildcats of Northern Michigan have come back very strongly with a touchdown and a field goal and Northern Michigan now leads ten to seven with less than a minute to play in the first half Alfaro is back in the huddle now. 
Otterson has made seven catches today for 119 yards. So two, wide, two receivers, tight end Otterson and wide receiver Parmalee, both over 100 yards in reception receptions, and we're still in the first half, folks. The Bronco crowd cheering for a score here. Easily, the Broncos are already in field goal range, but they want that touchdown right here. Alfaro with double tight ends. Page now in motion, making a running play. Gahey wide open. Touchdown, Santa Clara. The Santa Clara Broncos have taken the lead with 51 seconds to play in the first half. Dave Alfaro, a play fake, and then he went to the running back, fullback Tony Gahey, who was wide open in the right flat. He almost stumbled on the three, but he kept his footing and leaped into the end zone. Alfaro's second touchdown pass of the day is 14th of the season. Gahey makes his second, make it his third receiving touchdown of the year. Sullivan converts, and Santa Clara leads 14 to 10. Brian Sullivan has just kicked his 37th extra point of the year, and he's only missed once. In fact, in the last two years, he is now 70 out of 71. Here's that play again. You can't really see it, but the wide receiver is in motion, coming back to the line of scrimmage. So that opens up the right side of the field, and the Wildcats didn't make the proper adjustment. And Gahey is into the end zone. A brilliant play call by Santa Clara. And that came right after the timeout, so you can credit Pat Malley and his offensive coaches for that touchdown, and also some poise under pressure by their quarterback, Dave Alfaro. 51 seconds to play in the first half, 14 to 10 Santa Clara, but you know the way Northern Michigan can move down that field in a hurry, we might have some more scoring before the end of this first half. Sullivan prepares to kick off and he'll be kicking off either to number three on the left side of your screen that's Mercer Bryson or number 32 on the right Mike Delangelo 14 to 10 Santa Clara leading late first half Sullivan a line drive kick that lands on the 15 is taken by one of the wedge people Joe Fiorini Fiorini is belted on the 20 the Broncos really fired up after that score and now with 47 seconds to play in the half, the Wildcats of Northern Michigan have 80 yards to travel. Their quarterback, Phil Kessel, the third best quarterback in the nation statistically in Division II this season, comes in to talk to the players in the huddle. The Wildcats have not suffered any turnovers yet today. Santa Clara has lost two fumbles. Were it not for those two fumbles, the Broncos could be leading by as many as 11 or even more points. A draw play to Delangelo gets very little. Mike Delangelo, number 32, a senior from Ishpeming, Michigan, gets only a yard, and the Wildcats are letting that clock tick away, so maybe they are content trailing by only four points here at halftime. There's only 22, 21, and counting now. Bob Murphy will try to corral head coach Pat Malley before he leaves the field at halftime to see what is on Pat Malley's mind. Seven seconds to play. Last play of the first half. Delangelo again up the middle to the 25-yard line. As time runs out in the first half, the Broncos with a big drive in the last two minutes take the lead at halftime. And we'll wait for Bob Murphy to chat with Pat Malley, who is making his way across the field right now. The Broncos fumbles result in drives of 80 and 83 yards uh, to bring Northern Michigan back into it. Yeah, you know, actually that's, you know, a 28-point play. You know, we're going in to score to get 14, and it turns around to go 14 the other way. 
uh, I'm pleased with the way that we've been able to move the ball on the ground against them. I didn't know that, you know, that we'd be able to be that consistent. You're trapping them pretty good in the middle. The offensive line playing well. Yeah, we're playing well. Um, what we're going to have to do in the second half is we're going to have to keep ball control because they have the ability to score so quick. So, um, How did you free Gehi up on the touchdown to put you ahead? Well, it's a, you know, it's a play action thing off uh, off roll action, and we've got the flanker coming down and the tight end coming down. It took the free, or the uh, strong safety in the corner away. Left him one-on-one -on -one with the strong side backer who went with the tight end across, and he was wide open. All alone. All alone. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Pat Malley on his way to the dressing room. Uh, he feels pretty good about this, Pat, but not as good as he might except for the two fumbles. With that, we'll send it back upstairs to you. Thank you very much, Bob. A lovely cheerleader for Santa Clara. And with that note, I believe we're going to take a timeout. It's halftime. The scoreboard shows Division II playoff action. The Santa Clara Broncos 14, the Northern Michigan Wildcats 10. We'll be right back in just a moment. Pat, I know how badly you wanted to be a baseball player, and you never quite pulled it off. Uh, but here's the guy that could have taught you, Jerry McLean, who pitched here at Santa Clara, coached a little uh, here, and then over at San Jose State, came back as the head coach. And Jerry, it's never too early or too late to talk about baseball. They're using your field here today, Coach. Hi, Bob. I know. <laughs> this is uh, this is our field. It's not the baseball. I mean, it's not the football field. It's the baseball field. We just let them use it during the fall. And we're really happy to have the playoffs here and uh, two great teams here. And um, no, it's never it's never too early or too late to talk about baseball. Isn't it exciting to have the Division II playoffs here? And of course, Pat. I don't know anybody who's given more of himself to an intercollegiate athletic program than he has. And the whole school is involved. The unfortunate thing is that school is out, and most everyone one's gone it's sad because uh, we don't have class on Wednesday and and uh, after Tuesday's classes all the students went home for Thanksgiving and I think that we would have had a bigger turnout um, we have we have a pretty good turnout today but I think we'd have a, a lot bigger turnout but the school is really excited about being in the playoffs and uh, everybody's really behind football it's kind of uh, it's kind of like it used to be maybe 10 years ago where everybody really got caught up in all the sports and Santa Clara's uh, you know is really coming along strong uh, the football program is just the, the start of the school year and it just helps back basketball and baseball so Jerry it has to be the thrill of a lifetime for a young guy like yourself who had so much success pitching right over there to come back and all of a sudden be the head coach at your alma mater I bet you still get pumped up about that don't you it's uh, it's a dream come true Bob it's it's unbelievable it's it's always nice to you know to be at a school where you played and, and people know you and and uh, it's it's a great opportunity for me and uh, I'm really excited, and I think all our players are really excited, too, about having somebody that played here that that, that knows the school and knows the program and to help, you know, kind of uh, get them pumped up for the for the season and, and just get them excited about playing in Santa Clara. Right after the first of the year, Bronco baseball, of course, will be taking place right here, and the game starting as early as February, and Jerry, the Sports Channel will be here, and we hope we can tell everybody about Bronco baseball in 1981. Great. Thanks very much, Bob. Jerry McClain, the baseball coach with the Broncos. Pat, I'm going to send it back to you, and then Gil Canelli, the athletic director of northern michigan is going to join us for a short visit you take it sounds good murph right now we're going to take a break it's halftime santa clara 14 northern michigan 10 stay with us we're coming right back number 20 the free safety jeff herman jim lane jim had a great last three games of the year particularly the last two games when he ran for over 130 yards against san francisco state and he went over 200 yards against Northridge. In fact, there have been only three 200-yard rushing games in Santa Clara history, and two of them came this year. One by Tor Tyrone Forte, 243 against St. Mary's, and then Lane's effort against Northridge. Second down and three after the gain of seven. It's Jim Lane again. He follows big number 79. That's Gary Hoffman. Check it, 73, Jim Goodrow. And it's a first down for Santa Clara to the 35. So two running plays, and the Broncos continue to gain yards running the football. And that was definitely a question mark coming into today's game. How well would the Broncos be able to run against the very tough defense of Northern Michigan? First down and 10. Now will Alfaro open it up a little bit? The Broncos have some breathing room. On their own 35, Alfaro, the career leader for passing yardage at Santa Clara, hand off to the first man through, Tony Gahey. Gahey is greeted rather rudely by number 52, Jim Chapaniuk. A gain of only about a yard, it's second down and nine. 
winner of this game advances to the semifinals. As Bob Murphy rejoins us upstairs here. Murph, I not only want a green coat, but I also want a moped. <laughs> All those cheerleaders were asking if I knew you, Pat. <laughs> but yes, but what I know, I won't tell you. <laughs> Second down and nine. Jim Lane outside right follows Goodrow, but this time the defense really strings the play out beautifully as Reggie Oliver and Dennis Ware combined for the stop. Tim Staus, the outside linebacker, and Dennis Ware all getting a part of that tackle. One of the sideline observers got into the action. A young boy standing down there. That is not a place to watch a football game unless you've got some real reason for being there. That just is not a whole lot of fun. I don't know who that is, but looks like a young boy who just got wiped out on that play, Pat. Well, you've got to be careful if you're standing on the sidelines in a college football game, any football game, that's a dangerous position to be in. Third down and nine and a half for the Broncos of Santa Clara. Early third quarter. Three-man rush. Eight drop back to defend against the pass. And still the completion to Otterson, but it's short of a first down. Short of a first down. Otterson made the catch. Mercer Bryson made the tackle. It's fourth down. You know, Pat, one thing that we have kind of overlooked here, we did mention it a time or two, but we certainly didn't dwell on it. The old joke about the turning point of this game was the toss of the coin. In this case, it really was up till now because Northern Michigan won the toss. They elected to kick. Santa Clara promptly takes the opening kickoff and marches to a touchdown. And then, of course, Santa Clara has the choice and they're going to end up in a punting situation now, but they certainly have eaten up a lot of time on the clock. <laughs> From the 41-yard line, the punt by Sullivan is away. The catch is made by Steve Hermson. Hermson gets a good block. He cuts outside nicely. Hermson could break this one for big yardage. He gets up almost to midfield. And number three, Andy Schatzman, made the tackle that prevented a possible touchdown on that return. A nice job by Hermson. He made the catch and then came back to this side of the field and he picked up one key block and had some open space and then made a nice cut up the middle. So Northern Michigan has the first and 10 on the 46 yard line. It's 14 to 10 Santa Clara. First offensive play by the Wildcats in the second half. Kessel down the middle wide open incomplete though Jerry McCune could not hang on. From this side of the field, it looked like it was a catchable pass. It might have been farther away from the receiver than we perceived it to be. Kessel's stats in the first half, very impressive. Here's the play again, and it looked like the receiver didn't quite get his hands up in time. <laughs> it's second down and 10. Slot left, McCune inside of Seibel to the far side. Three wide receivers this time. Zinda on the blitz. Zinda is chasing Kessel. Kessel throwing on the run. Seibel makes the catch. Seibel cutting across the grain. Seibel is tackled by Schatzman close to a first down. Seibel did a nice job, Bob. He ran a second pass pattern that time to help out the quarterback that was in trouble. And the same observation over and over again, Pat. The agility and the ability to scramble of Phil Kessel a senior at Northern Michigan, and scrambling while all the while knowing where that receiver is. Look at the pick blocks here as Seibel brings the ba ball back uh, across the field, finally brought down by Schatzman, but not before a first down. On the 42 and a half yard line of Santa Clara, first and 10, Kessel pitches out to George Works. Works follows a block, cuts inside, and Works gets some Good real estate before he is brought down by Chris Lundy. Works followed the big left guard, John Claxton, that time. And it's a gain of almost seven yards. Second down and between three and four to go for a first. Head coach Bill Rademacher on the Northern Michigan sidelines. Northern Michigan lost only one game this year, 35 to 28 to Eastern Illinois, the top-ranked team. Kessel delivers. Seibel, what a catch! 
Jeff Lane upended Seibel, but Seibel made a miraculous grab. What a fine receiver he is, Murph. A first down catch, too, as Kessel with that kind of stiff arm throwing action again. That's the second hit like that that Lane has made today. Seibel catches it up one side, down the other for the first down. That requires a lot of concentration to hang on to the ball when you land on your helmet. First and 10 on the 25. The footing is kind of rough in this section of the field. Let's see if it affects this play at all. Kessel Audible. repositions Mike Delangelo, and now Delangelo gets the handoff, but he's dragged down from behind by Mike Zinda. Second down, a gain of three, second down and seven. 10.45 to play, third quarter. Santa Clara clinging to a 14 to 10 lead. Broncos have fumbled twice. Both fumbles ultimately resulted in scores, the only scores for Northern Michigan. I can't recall Northern Michigan fumbling, Al. We don't have a fumble for them. And no interceptions. No miscues for the Wildcats. It's amazing with all the passing we've seen today, neither quarterback has suffered an interception. George Works, he has some running room to the 15, to the 10. Works fumbles, but it's picked up by Seibel. And then Seibel takes out the referee. When you talk about the right place at the right time, it was Scott Seibel on that play. The minute we talk about the lack of fumbles, Pat, we no sooner say it than there is the fumble right there. Mike Zinda made the hit that caused the fumble, but then Seibel, number 47, scooped it up and ran out of bounds on the 11th. First and 10. <laughs> the Wildcats driving here. Larry Aurelia in the game replacing Green. Wildcats could make the first down inside the one yard line. Full house backfield and now Seibel is in motion. Play action, Kessel rolling and looking and delivering incomplete as Delangelo ran into number 42, Tom Renning on the play. They really ran together, Pat. The, I'm sure the routes were not intended that way. It's seldom you design them on collision courses like this. The pass took Delangelo right there and Renning, who is the punter, broke up the play. That's not the way it is supposed to work. Second down and 11. It was a pretty well-thrown ball by Phil Kessel. The Broncos are going to have to put some pressure on Kessel now. Let's watch those linebackers and see what they might do. We've got McAtee on the near side. Timeout called by Northern Michigan. As the Wildcats call timeout with 10.05, we're going to keep it right here. And the Broncos are going to have a little seance on defense as Schatzman comes over to talk to the Santa Clara coaches. There you see Phil Kessel, number 11. Very impressed with that young man. Got pretty good size at 6'2 and 180. Phil Kessel, Pat, is the kind of a quarterback that all of a sudden you might just see pop up somewhere in the National Football League and play for about 10 years. He kind of reminds me of a, a guy like Ken Anderson, maybe, the guy who used to play and I think still is on the team of the Cincinnati Bengals. I think uh, Ken was from uh, Augustana College. Well, that's right, or a Jim Zorn and his old school, uh, Cal Poly Pomona. You know, you never would have thought of a Jim Zorn, but Kessel is kind of a right-handed Jim Zorn. He's the same kind of a player. Maybe he doesn't have Zorn's explosive kind of speed, but he certainly has the ability to scramble, and he's very agile. That is... Bill Rodemaker, the coach there on the left, you see, here's that collision again as Reining comes right underneath Delangelo and literally breaks up the pass. <laughs> he was reaching for the pass himself. Well, in the pass coverage was a number 82 for the Broncos that we don't have, Pat. I don't know whether Pat Malley with that frown on his face knows who number 82 is either. Second down and 10 for Northern Michigan. Knocking on the Broncos door, the blitz is on, the pass is away, it's incomplete. A great defensive play by Andy Schutzman. As that ball looked for all the world like it was going to be a touchdown pass to Scott Seibel. Little inside loop on defense, it was Garfield Scott running in combination with Dave Ramona that time and freeing himself up. Schutzman just takes a last-ditch dive at that ball, Pat. 
a great play in combination with a little luck. I was going to say, it looked like on the replay that Seibel just plain dropped the ball before contact was made. So the Broncos get a break. It's third down and 10. Let's watch it again. It looks like it just pops out of the chest of Seibel before he's really hit. He won't drop too many of those. Third and 10. A blitz is coming again. It's lobbed up into the end zone. It's a touchdown to Greg McLean. Greg McLean gets the touchdown and then does a little disco number in the corner of the end zone. Northern Michigan is back on top, 16 to 10. Perfectly thrown pass by Phil Kessel. Well, I think they realized they had something the last time when Shotson was able to, to he was able to postpone the touchdown, Pat. Let's put it that way. But that little single route with man coverage shotsman trailing mclean all the way and a beautifully thrown ball that's the secret to it of course laying that ball out in front of the receiver and mclean just simply ran under it for the touchdown prior to his little dance here's matt Beatty. the kick is up the kick is good 9:55 to play third quarter timeout on the field scoreboard shows the northern michigan wildcats 17 and the santa clara broncos 14. Now, new to the South Bay area, another RTO store. RTO means rent to own by the week or by the month. Beautiful new brand name televisions and appliances. Rent to own a portable TV. Rent to own a new color console. Rent to own a new washer, dryer, or refrigerator. No credit checks, no long-term obligations, no repair bills. Rent can apply towards ownership, so call now. Rent today, own tomorrow. Call RTO stores now in San Jose at 259-5755. Lowell Honda is now the exclusive Honda dealer for San Jose. The only car we sell is Honda, so we can put all our efforts into keeping our customers happy. Now, in the event you encounter a problem, you see me or my son Fred, and we'll handle it. There's no better place to buy a car, and the Honda Medic's superior service make Lowell Hondas the greatest Hondas. Thank you. Lowell Honda on North 1st Street and Highway 101, one block north of the Hyatt House in San Jose. Now the exclusive Honda dealer for San Jose and home of the friendly Honda Medic. A seesaw battle if there ever was one. 17 to 14 now. The Wildcats of Northern Michigan lead. The kickoff by Matt Beatty. It should be deep enough, and Heinrich is going to down it in the end zone. And the second after he downed it, I think he had a second thought. It looked like he wanted to return that ball just as he downed it. Pat, this has all the earmarks of the kind of games that we have seen so often, the kind that Stanford and Cal and uh, San Jose has often played, and these Broncos too. The last team that has the football, even at this early stage with 9.55 remaining in the third quarter, will probably be the team that wins this football game. There you see the drive, 53 yards, nine skillful plays. Dave Alfaro, the quarterback. A draw play to Jim Lane. Jim trying to get outside, but a great play by Reggie Oliver, number 45. He really didn't make the tackle, but he forced Lane to the sideline where teammate Mark Zabrowski made the tackle. Let's see if we can pick it up. Number 45 here is right in the way of Lane. He's right there. So Lane then had to change his course, and he was hit and brought down easily on that play by Mark uh, Chapman. Fletcher far side, Parmalee near side. Both wide receivers out of your picture. Gain of one yard, second down and nine. Alfaro looking for Gahey. Instead, he goes to Fletcher. Kurt Fletcher has a first down to the 38. Fletcher has been running that same pattern all day, Pat, to the sideline. That time, he turned it up inside, made a very fine catch. He, there was some linebacker help there by old number 52. Jim Shapanyuk. That's right. S-Z-C, -Z, Z. I've never seen a word or a name that had two Z's that close together. Oh, they used to do it in the comic strips when the guy was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10, Santa Clara, their own 38. And up the Gahey, a gaping hole, he's to the 46. A gain of eight yards. There's that play again, the fake pitch, and then the handoff to the first man through. Pat Malley saying that he was somewhat surprised that the Broncos could run as well as they have been able to do. Well, one of the reasons is the fine block that time by Tom Bordenave. Chuck Buckingham has been strong in there, so is Goodrow. 
Don Brown, Hoffman, the offensive front, Parmalee coming to the near side, Otterson, tight end on the far side, Page inside set this time in a wide slot. Second down and two, Page now in motion. Hand off Jim Lane, off the left tackle spot. He's got the first down to midfield. A good block by Gary Hoffman and Tom Bordenave again. And Lane to the midfield stripe, first and 10 Broncos. Hoffman, we told you, is replacing Hugh Loveless at that left tackle position. And Hugh Loveless earlier, in fact, about a week and a half ago, was voted the most valuable player for the Broncos in 1980. That youngster who got knocked over a little while ago is still on the Bronco bench down below us, Pat. They're putting a little temporary cast on his right leg. He might have received a broken leg. Alfaro play action. Looking for Fletcher. Goes to Fletcher. Makes the catch. He's inside Northern Michigan Territory at the 32-yard line. Two outstanding passing quarterbacks in today's game. Dave Alfaro. That ball is right on the money. Well, we've been watching the wide receivers. Parmalee going more to the inside than Fletcher. But now we see Fletcher turning it up inside. If there's one marked change between the first half and the second half, that's it, Pat. More patterns, crossing patterns, in patterns, over the middle, where those wide receivers were running pi primarily sideline and up patterns in the first half. From the 31-yard line of the Wildcats, Dave Alfaro against the blitz, a screen play to Tony Gahey. He's got a wave of blockers in front of him, but what a tremendous defensive play by free safety Jeff Herman. He just ignored all of the blockers. Now maybe they didn't see him, Pat. He's only 5'9". That could be. You talk about a perfect call against the blitz. Here it was. And look at all the blocking, but... Coming in to make just a superior defensive play, Jeff Herman. That is, without question, the defensive play of the day. Look at Jeff Herman. Just a little guy at 5'9 and about 175 pounds, 5'7 rather. He's from Sutton's Bay, Michigan, as now Tom Bordenave, who is the son of Don Bordenave, the defensive coordinator of Santa Clara, is being helped off the field. Alfaro now, 20 for 27, 269 yards and two touchdowns. I'll bet you can ice skate on Sutton's Bay, Michigan right about now. <laughs> Second down and six. That play still gained four yards, but it looked like it might go all the way. Gay up the middle. Champagne stops him after a very short gain of two yards, and it will be third down and four. You know, you think how many times or how few times today that one team has just had the ball and ran three plays, and then they were forced to punt. I can't think of one time all day, in fact. A little too much offense for that, Pat. These two teams are really volatile. Handle with care. 17 to 14, Northern Michigan leads, but Santa Clara is driving here in the third quarter. Parmalee far side with single coverage. Alfaro is back. He's looking to Parmalee. Now Alfaro's going to run it down to the 21, close to a first down, and Alfaro was really racked on the play by big number 57, and that would be Bob Yout. Not sure that he made it, Pat. Alfaro is saying yes, but his signal does not count. Dave has got it lined up. And they are going to bring the yardsticks onto the field to take the measurement. This would be a big one. I think the Broncos will go for it even if this is not a first down. But it is. They've called it right, didn't they? <laughs> Quarterbacks have to have good eyes, Murph. The Broncos cheering section. They've had a lot to cheer about today. Although the Broncos trail right now by three points, Santa Clara has a first and 10 on the 21-yard line of Northern Michigan. Fletcher into the huddle that time, discussing the play with Alfaro. <laughs> far side, Fletcher near side. Dave Alfaro is trying to pass for over 300 yards for the fourth time in his career. Double coverage on both wide receivers. So the Broncos run a running play. Tyrone Forte, he's to the 13-yard line. The Broncos have just been running the plays today that 
seem to be perfect plays in particular situations. They are putting some pressure to be sure on that Northern Michigan defense, Pat, with the alternating from the passing game to the running game. If there is one observation we could make, it's simply that the Broncos have been able to run the ball up inside with more continuity than have the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. It's second down and three after that seven yard scamper by Forte. Forte again, 10, he's to the five. Inside the five for a first and goal. The Broncos continue to rip off yardage on the ground and through the air. Here it is again. Forte running through a hole that you could have driven a Winnebago through. First and goal on the five yard line. The Broncos on the threshold of a go ahead score here. Now a wing formation to the left is Page and he splits out to the left now. Double tight ends. Running backs are split. It's Jim Lane off the right tackle spot. Cut down. Peter Rayford, the left cornerback, stopped Jimmy Lane. A gain of a yard inside the four. Second and goal, Murph. That young boy who got hurt earlier on that sideline play, Pat, is Butch Pastorini's son. And now he's got a cast, a portable temporary cast on his right leg. I certainly hope he's all right. But he took a pretty good shot down there on the sideline. We'll get a picture of him for you in a little bit. There's a cast right there. You see it. Second and goal, Santa Clara. Four minutes to play, third quarter. Alfaro, Jim Lane. He is cut down on a brilliant defensive play by Reggie Oliver again. Number 45, Reggie Oliver, a sophomore from Ecorse, Michigan. Fletcher will come out. Page will replace him with some play information for Alfaro. I think the Broncos are going to have to put this one in the air. Twice today, the Broncos have executed play action fakes, and then Alfaro has thrown a touchdown from this part of the field. Page, far side. Parmalee, Pat, is set as a second tight end on the near side of the field. He might bear some watching. Timeout. Santa Clara calls a timeout with 3.32 to play in this third quarter. Dave Alfaro just simply did not like what he was set up for, Pat, and he decided that this is so crucial, so important, you never know when you're going to get in this neighborhood again. So let's make sure of what we're doing. Calls the timeout, comes over to talk to Pat Malley and Ronda Monner as you see them on the sidelines. There they are. Ronda Monner on the right. Al Faro, of course, number 10. And they're trying to figure out what play is it that will work for us. Mark Zabrowski, number 91, talking with the defensive coaches of Northern Michigan. This is a great football game, Pat. I'm really enjoying this as much as any game we've done all year. And, of course, it's kind of interesting when you know that the game is being played for your very survival. There are That's seniors right. on these teams. Dave Alfaro is one, and his counterpart, Kessel, for Northern Michigan, Phil Kessel, both seniors. And they know full well that if they win today, they'll have the opportunity to play yet another time. If they lose today, their college careers are over. That adds a little drama to the proceedings, doesn't it? Sure does. Now on third down and goal. Same set as before. I think they might go back to the near side of the field. Let's watch. Alfaro, play action. He's looking for Otterson. He's not really open, but probably is. Touchdown, Broncos! Parmalee just a foot into the end zone, Pat, and that's all you need. As Alfaro got great protection across the front that time from Hoffman, Bordenay, Buckingham, Goodrow, Brown, the offensive line. Look at them right there, Buckingham the center. There's a fine block on the other side by Gahey as he picks up a blitzer. And finally, Parmalee with just a little, little curl route in the end zone is wide open. Alfaro's third touchdown pass of the day. Parmalee makes his eighth touchdown grab of the season. And Santa Clara leads 20 to 17, pending this extra point attempt by Brian Sullivan. Sullivan 
in his career had a string of 57 consecutive extra points. And he's made 70 out of 71 over the last two years. Brian is from Damien High School in Diamond Bar, California. That's down in Southern California. He has practically rewritten the record book as far as kicking and punting are concerned for Santa Clara. The got an illegal down. procedure on the defense. Refuse. Replay the down. It just reminds me, Murph, there haven't been very many penalties since early in the first quarter. I think they've done a good job, Pat. I think these Big Ten officials, led by the referee Gene Calhoun, they established a little discipline early and then sort of let the guys play football. Sullivan boots it. Mike Heinrich held the ball as Sullivan kicked it. Good. Timeout, 326 to play, third quarter. Scoreboard shows Santa Clara 21 and Northern Michigan 17. We'll be right back. back warm memories of yesteryear with our family album by Happy Jack's Village Square Dance Band. Our family album by Happy Jack's Village Square Dance Band contains 43 great old-time songs and can be yours for just $7.99 for the record or $9.99 for the 8-track tape. Here's how to order. To order our family album, call 1-800-228-5000 or save the $3 COD and handling charges by sending $7.99 for the record or $9.99 for the 8-track tape to Happy Jack, P.O. Box 50001, San Jose, California, 95150. That's Happy Jack, P.O. Box 50001, San Jose, California. The lead has changed hands today five times. 21-17, Santa Clara leads. Sullivan really puts one into orbit. Delangelo on the goal line. He's going to bring it out to the 10-15. Cut down there. Nice play by number 34 of Santa Clara. Outside linebacker Greg Mooney on the special team, Bob. Pat, I honestly don't believe we have seen Dave Alfaro play a lot of football here. He's a senior at Santa Clara. I don't believe he has ever been more brilliant than he was on this last drive. Just picking, picking away at that Northern Michigan defense and finally finding Parmalee for a three-yard touchdown. And Perry runs out of the end zone as if to say, <laughs> you can't get me now. That's right. <laughs> he ran all the way back to the Santa Clara bench. A... 13 play, 80 yard drive that consumed 629 on the clock with 322 remaining now in the third. 21 to 17, Santa Clara on top, Kessel retreating. He's gonna throw the bomb up the near side. McLean, is he inbounds? Yes, he is inbounds on the 45 yard line. And that official down there is really getting an earful. But remember, in college football, you only need one foot inbounds. And I think the replay will prove that to be a good call, Bob. He was covered by Lane and Selden over and under coverage that time, but it, once again, a beautifully thrown ball by Kessel. I thought it was good, Pat. It didn't surprise me at all when they called it good. Right down below us as we are, once again, opposite our cameras, which are on the far side of the field. First and 10 for Northern Michigan, 35 yards on that play. Mark Marana. Schutzman has him and brings him down. And a penalty flag at the end of the play. A penalty flag is down. It might be a late hit out of bounds. It is against Santa Clara, a major infraction. 15 big ones. Well, there are a lot of Santa Clara officials in the stands who do not agree with that call. There were a lot of officials on the sideline after that call a minute ago. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense, first down. There are too many people on the sidelines here, Pat. That is one thing that happens in a situation like this. Foot football is played in a somewhat casual atmosphere here on the Santa Clara campus, and too many people there, just too many pedestrians out there. That had something to do with the young youngster getting hurt a while ago. Kessel is being run out of the pocket but he completes one I believe to Delangelo and it's a first down inside the 10. It is Mike Delangelo the senior from Ishpeming, Michigan. 
Kessel threw that ball on the run beautifully. Schatzman landed on the back of the receiver, but not before the gainer to you the like, seven. You like my theory, don't you? What's the that, last Mark? team that has the ball wins the game? I think I agree with you. And these teams are doing nothing to refute that theory. We have not seen an interception yet on either side. Broncos have given up two fumbles. Wildcats have not given one up yet. Here's Delangelo outside right, trying to squeeze into that corner, but he's run out on the three by Mark McAtee and Chris Lundy. So it'll be second and goal. Two minutes, 39 seconds to play, third quarter. Santa Clara leading 21 to 17. But Northern Michigan knocking on the door. The penalties today. Alfaro has had three touchdown passes today. Kessel of Northern Michigan has had two. Let's see if he tries to equalize Dave's total. Now Seibel in motion. Being picked up by Jeff Lane. Single coverage. Kessel. is not in. He's on the one foot line. I thought they might give him the touchdown because he it looked like he was pushed out of the end zone by Chris Lundy. Pat, watch him here. He will wait and wait and wait and finally let it go. Lundy made a fine defensive play preventing the touchdown and the Wildcats will now line it up inside the one. On that is, like that's good. not snow, Pat. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Looks like snow. On a play like that, the ruling, I believe, is the position of the ball. As you saw the receiver with his feet in the end zone jump up for it, but the ball never crossed the plane of the goal line. Third and goal. George works. He fumbled. It's loose. It's still loose. McAtee had it. It's still loose. Who has the football? The Broncos have it. Spinning out of there with the football was Schatzman. I don't know what they're going to call. They say the ball was dead. The play was blown dead before the fumble. So it's no fumble. It's fourth and goal on the one. Oh, Pat, watch him lose the ball here. I was watching it through the glasses. The ball is now gone. Bad call. That's a bad call. His progress might have been stopped, but he certainly was still moving toward the goal line, and there certainly was still activity taking place down there. Chris Lundy being helped off the field. That brings Rich Martig into the lineup. One minute, 32 seconds to play, third quarter. It's fourth and goal. There's a freshman lining up in a critical defensive situation now as Mardig replaces Lundy. Let's watch it again here. He is surging, still moving, and oh. now the ball comes loose. That's got to be a fumble. That was the hat. I don't know who that was. Might have been Green. I think it was Green. Knocked that ball loose. One of the craziest sequences I've ever seen. The ball was popping loose. Nobody seemed to know where it was for about a half second. It's hard to believe, Pat, with this explosive offense, Northern Michigan is 0 for 5 in third down conversions. That's because they have gotten the first down usually on either first or second down. They haven't had any thirds. But that is interesting. Well, the old think tank is operating now, offensively and defensively. Martig, a freshman, in there replacing Lundy in the right cornerback position. You see him number 5 right there in the middle of your picture. Will they pick on him, or will they try to jam it in from one yard out? It's not, it's not really a running team. They do not run with great power. This is the biggest play in the game to this point. Late third quarter, Broncos lead by four. Kessel, he's going to pass for it. He throws to Seibel, touchdown! Phil Kessel comes up with the clutch play on fourth and a yard to go. And Seibel ran a turnout in the end zone in front of Jeff Lane and made a nice catch just a yard into the end zone. Kessel a little wobbly with that throw, Pat, but right on the mark. That was the old 59 option in high school. How would a pass play ever get the number 59? That's why we didn't win too many, I guess. <laughs> we had the plays numbered wrong. That's what it was, though, Seibel catching it. Just barely into the end zone. That's all it takes. Matt Beatty to kick. Place down. It hits the upright. No good. It's no good. That's a big play. Timeout. 128 to play third quarter. 
the scoreboard shows Northern Michigan 23 and Santa Clara 21. Now that two-point difference could turn out, Bob, later on to be a very, very big factor in the outcome of this game. Oh, one little kick like that, Pat. We talked about that, if you'll remember, even before this show started, that Geller or Brian Sullivan with their toe might determine the outcome of this kind of a contest. Both quarterbacks have now thrown three touchdown passes. There you see the last of them right there with Seibel. Seibel out of the deep backfield, runs out. He's in motion. He runs out into a slot set. They use all kinds of formations, all kinds of motions. And Seibel is usually in there someplace, figuring very prominently. 80 yards and seven quick plays. Seibel, the one-yarder from Phil Kessel. Now each quarterback has three touchdowns in the game and still it's amazing we have not had an interception yet today. I'm going to ask Al Whitlock how many passes each quarterback has thrown and that will be an even more impressive statistic. Why don't you ask him tougher questions, Pat, and give him time limits. Give him five seconds. See if he can come up with it <laughs> and take him down. He did it. 60 passes in the game, no interceptions. 32 by Alfaro and 28 by Kessel. Let's flip-flop that. When he turns his hand upside down, that means flip-flopping. That's what that means. 128 to play in the third quarter. Two-point lead for the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. NCAA Division II playoff action 1980 from Buckshaw Stadium in Santa Clara. Heinrich will not run this one out. First and 10 on the 20. So now it's time for Dave Alfaro and company to go back to work as Beatty trots off the field. Getting a little dark here in Buckshaw Stadium as we get into the later afternoon and lots of cloud cover and I'm beginning to believe that the weatherman after predicting rain for about eight weeks, might be right this time, Pat. <laughs> Law of average is starting to work on his side. Looks like the rain could be coming this evening. The lights are on here at Buckshaw Stadium. And you see, moving from your right to your left, the Santa Clara Broncos trailing by two, 23-21. Jim Lane off right guard, right tackle. He gets maybe a yard. Stopped on the play by Kurt Woolian. Second down and... Give him a give him a couple of yards. Second down and eight. Certainly wouldn't want to criticize Jim Lane for the part he's played in the Broncos with their eight and two record. Would never think about that, but at the same time, we have to say, Pat, that the presence of Keith Pettisclo today would, I think, really swing this game in favor of Santa Clara. Pettisclo at his best would be running for big yardage in this game. You agree with that? Absolutely. Pedestal carried the ball only 12 times all year. Here's Jim Lane outside. Lane to the 23. That's a scrambling defense played by Northern Michigan. As it is number three, Mercer Bryson leading the charge. I've been very impressed all day with old 52. SZ, CZ, EP, and I get the end of it okay. Jim Chapanyuk. Chapanyuk, that's right. Third and seven, big play here for Santa Clara. Neither team has been forced to punt very much today. Page in motion, how far away gets the blitz? He is racked up, making the tackle on the play. Big number 91, Mark Zabrowski, an outside linebacker who blitzed to perfection that time. They just simply lost Zabrowski that time. And I'm trying to see who they put in the pattern. Otterson was in the pattern. Page was in the pattern. And they missed Zabrowski on the blitz, Pat. He just came through there with nobody touching him. And this puts Brian Sullivan in a pressure punting situation. He has not been kicking for big distance here today. Line of scrimmage, the 15-yard line. <laughs> Waiting back, Person and Delangelo. The third quarter expires. At the end of three, the scoreboard shows Northern Michigan 23 and Santa Clara 21. Hey, Lair. That big fella down there. You know, Sarge, he, he looks just like you. Well, everybody in the world has got a twin walking around someplace. Didn't you know that? <laughs> You know, there are a lot of good reasons why more and more people are becoming property owners here at the shores of Poker Flat. 
As sure as a poker flat fronts on four and a half miles of Big Lake Tullock. Yes, sir. For those folks who love a view, a lot of beautiful home sites here above the lake. Ten and one half percent financing is still available, and you talk about amenities. You know, the time was never better for buying your lakefront or lake view home site at the shores of Polk and Flat than right now. Golly, Sarge, looks like we're too late. A lot of claims have been staked already. But then again, hey, Sarge, where are you going? Don't you miss out. Come see the shores of Poker Flat. For a color brochure, call Collect, 408-998-1393. That's 408-998-1393. Back here at Buckshaw Stadium on the campus of Santa Clara University. This is Pat Hughes along with Bob Murphy on the Sports Channel. The Northern Michigan Wildcats lead by a pair at the end of three very entertainment-packed quarters. When I was down on the field, Pat, I had a little visit with Bridget Medina, who you'll remember as sure. the pretty little lady, a senior, who just completed her volleyball career here at Santa Clara. She is the niece of Coach Pat Malley, a psychology major. Both teams have certainly come up with some impressive statistics on offense today as Brian Sullivan waits near his own goal line. The line of scrimmage, the 15. They don't try to rush the punt. Here's a beautiful punt by Sullivan. Sullivan is going to land all the way back on the 23-yard line. And finally picked up by Herbson, and the tackle is made by Doug Vieira. That's the Brian Sullivan that these Bronco fans have come to love in his four years here in Broncoville. That is a 61-yard punt, Pat, and that one backed up. That was like a well-hit seven iron that kind of backed up instead of going forward. With any luck at all, that ball could have gone another 10 or 15 yards. And Sullivan gave that a little extra. He really hit that one with gusto. Just outstanding. Boy, the Broncos really needed that. Now they need to play some defense and get the football back. What a weapon Sullivan is. Kessel against the blitz, gets rid of it to Delangelo. Delangelo gets by Schatzman and is run out of bounds by Harrison. And Kessel was really nailed by Mike Zinda after he got rid of that ball. Kessel looks a little unsteady as he gets up right there, Pat. But he's a tough youngster. I think it'll take more than that. I'll tell you, you know what a quarterback really doesn't like? Number one, he doesn't like getting hit a whole lot, as Zinda's going to just bury him right there. But his passing hand, that turf is pretty sandy down there, and he doesn't like to get his hand all grimy or covered with sand. You see, he's trying to get his hands clean now so he can get a good touch on that football. That's a good point, Bert. Here's George Works, outside left. He's going to be buried. It's third down now, third and four. Kessel is still, now he's got his jersey pulled out. He's still trying to get that hand free of sand because he knows he's going to be throwing the football here in a third down situation. Third and about four. Mike Delangelo back into the game. He replaces George Works as they shuttle information back and forth to Kessel. Wide receivers split to the far side. Slotted inside of Seibel. Big third down play here. Kessel almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Fourth down as Dave Ramona got a left hand on it. And it's going to be a Bronco ball. He just missed Seibel last time, Pat. It was a little combination pattern. Seibel running underneath the coverage, trying to get just enough for the first down. They weren't being very greedy at all. And that is one of the few balls all day that Kessel simply has thrown away from the target. He just simply missed that one. There's no better way to put it. Punting situation. Tom Rinning comes in. He boomed up 50 yards on his last effort. Harrison deep. Harrison returned to kickoff 92 yards for a touchdown this year, but this is a punt. And it's a wobbler end over end. Harrison on the run. Fumble! It's taken! In the air, it'll go all the way by number 50. It's John Casanova. He goes into the end zone, but wait a minute. The play was maybe blown dead. I don't know how it could be blown dead. Pat, that was one of those plays 
you could see developing. Harrison coming up quickly to field the punt. Otterson moving from his left to his right to feel that you just knew they were going to collide. There was no communication on that. Nothing good could come of it. They would have been better off to leave that alone. I don't know why he couldn't run with it. It was a fumble recovered in the air. Maybe in a punting situation, you're not allowed to do that. There he fielded it very cleanly. It was Casanova with a 50 over his 83. The 50 to allow him to take an inside position on the punt. But it is not a touchdown as we thought it might be. 13-44 to play in the game. 23-21, Northern Michigan leads. And Northern Michigan has the ball first and 10 on the 37-yard line of Santa Clara. That was only a 30-yard effort by Tom Rennick. Well, Pat, we'll have to read through our rule book. Obviously, in pro football, you can do that. In college football, you can do it as long as the fumble is recovered in the air. The change of possession might have something to do with it. We sound very ignorant, don't we? I don't like the sound that way. Here's Bill Kessel. Being run out of the pocket. Kessel is going to run out of bounds along the near side. He'll swallow the loss of about a yard because he didn't want to throw one away and possibly have it picked off. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Can you ever imagine Howard Cosell saying that he sounds very ignorant? <laughs> That's where I try to separate myself from that gentleman. <laughs> second and 12. That was a big play a moment ago. The fumbled punt, though. Big play as Northern Michigan has the ball once again. Now the defense for Santa Clara has to be getting a little weary. Comes in to Kessel. Plenty of time. He can autograph that football. Throws on the run. Open as Seibel ducks the ball. He was hit by Jeff Harrison. Right in front of Seibel was Andy Schatzman jumping as high as he possibly could. And once again, Kessel with that great touch. Just a fabulous throw. I think that was Chris Lundy, was it, Pat? It was Harrison who made the hit number seven, yeah. but I think it was tipped in front of the receiver. By Lundy. By Lundy. Right. Third down at 12. Big Big looks kind of tired, Pat. We were watching him in the blitzing situation, and he just simply could not get to Kessel. Zinda now. Lined up. McAtee looks like he might come through inside. Zinda blitzing again. The pass by Kessel. Seibel makes the comeback catch. First down. Just barely caught that ball. Inches off the turf. That's a first down, a clutch third down conversion. Fabulous throw once again by Kessel. Well, they're going to say that he trapped it. The Santa Clara players are going to say that he trapped it. We can't be sure right there. It looks like he might have, Pat, but he certainly had his arms underneath it. Looked like he let the football go through the hoop, didn't it? It almost did. Looked like it hit the ground. But the officials thought otherwise. First and ten, Kessel. Delangelo following a block. But the play sprung out. Andy shots from the cornerback really did the job in stringing the play out. And then teammates McAtee and Harrison came up to finish the play. Also, Tim Pistoresi. Good observation, Pat. Schatzman did just a fabulous job right there, and he won't be credited maybe with the final tackle, although he made some contact. But the responsibility of that cornerback is to string that thing out. And help is on the way if you can get him forced over toward those sidelines. Second Bring it out as far as you can. Second down and eight. Kessel is over 300 yards passing for the day. First thing you'd like to do is turn it inside. Failing that, get him strung out as far as you can. Kessel has five receivers out on the pattern. Kessel being chased. Kessel still being chased. He might run it. He can still throw, and he does to Seibel, who falls over at the 18-yard line short of a first down. There are players all over the field. <laughs> They are worn out, Pat. What a wild play that was. Look at Seibel. You think he's not tired? He ran about five patterns that time. As Kessel is going to run about a quarter of a mile. There is Zinda. He's going to miss. Get up again now. Mike, you're going to get another shot at him. Here he comes again. What an effort. 
what a tremendous game this has been between two very well coached teams 11 and a half minutes to play a big third down coming up northern michigan leads by two points we'd like to thank mike mcnulty for his stellar performance as the sports information director of santa clara getting us a lot of information today boy has he been busy kessel pitch out to george works he needs five yards he is short of the first down jeff harrison made the tackle a yard short of the first down chain harrison again fine defensive play by garfield scott making some penetration forcing it wide that time Injured player. That number is number three, John Casanova. That's right. That is Casanova, that's the same fellow Pat who scored what could have been a touchdown a little bit earlier. Watch this one get look at Scott. See him gonna force that. He's gonna force that play wide. Another fine play by number 23, Lundy, as Harrison comes up to make yet another hit. Big play now, fourth down situation, score 23-21 Northern Michigan. The three-pointer is of some consequence because it could make it 26-21 and get the game out of reach as far as a Bronco field goal is concerned. But it would not take away from the Broncos the possibility of taking the lead with the touchdown. There you see Casanova. Six Casanova, 15-pound sophomore. That's an interesting name here in Santa Clara football history, Pat. Len Casanova for a number of years, the successor to Buck Shaw here in Santa Clara before going up to a great career at the University of Oregon. Coached at Pittsburgh in there for a year or two prior to that. Cass, a great friend, a beloved alumnus of this university. Once kicked a football 100 yards. It's fourth and a yard. Now the backup quarterback, Tom Bertoli, is the holder. This might be a fake. Geller from the 23. It's a 33-yard field goal attempt from the hash mark. It's up. It's definitely long enough. It's good. It is good with 10.55 to play. Timeout on the field. Northern Michigan now leads 26 to 21. Don't go away. Bob Hemsel a recognized authority on Volkswagens. I decided a long time ago to call this dealership Bob Himsel Volkswagen. Oh, I could have called it Almaden Volkswagen or Capital Expressway Volkswagen, but I wanted my name up there so that you'd know who you're doing business with. Bob Himsel has been connected with Volkswagen for 26 years. We're proud of our service department and proud of the people who work here. Hi, Bob. Oh, Gary, what's with this? Just a little minor tune-up. Great. Our mechanics have 160 years of experience. Some have been with me for over 12 years. That's stability. Bob Hemsel also puts his name on every used car. And we guarantee them, too. We do what it takes to bring every used car up to our standards before we sell it. I've always said that I want to give our customers a dollar's worth of value for every dollar spent. Bob Hemsel, a recognized Volkswagen authority. 911 West Capital Expressway, San Jose. 55 to play, 26 to 21. Northern Michigan kicking off Matt Beatty. It's short, end over end. It'll be taken by Heinrich on the four yard line. He's right up the sideline to the 35 40. Nice return by Mike Heinrich. Gives the Broncos good field position here. Dave Alfaro comes back on with his offensive troops. Steve Hermson finally shut that sideline down, but not before Mike Herman brought it all the way back to the 40. That was quite a return, Pat. They're going to say now that he went out of bounds at the 30, I believe. They're going to move the ball back to the 30-yard line. It didn't look that way from our vantage point. Heinrich is shaken up, holding his left hip. That young man is in pain right now. Mike, the son of Don Heinrich, former professional player. Backs in the eye, slot left. Alfaro pitches back to Tyrone Forte. Not much room over there. He's out of bounds. Loss of yardage on the play of one yard. Second and 11. 
Broncos have shown that tendency, Pat, to want to run on first down. They would prefer, I think, to kind of mix their offense up and not have to rely solely on the pass. But in the last two or three possessions, they have been shut down in those first down opportunities. They're going to have to mix it up a little bit now. Wide receivers, as you see Parmalee go to the far side of the field. Fletcher in the wide slot just inside him, just out of your picture to the right. Northern Michigan has not lost a road game this year. Fletcher can't catch it. Intercepted on the play by Pete Rayford. Rayford to the 40 of Santa Clara. Parmalee tackles him on the 36. A big turnover, the first interception of the day. Fletcher was wide open, Pat. There was no one within five to eight yards of him, and Alfaro just simply overthrew him. He was able to get a hand on it, but all he did in getting a hand on it was to make the interception that much easier. Watch this little circle route as he runs a rounded out post, leaps up, bats the ball up in the air, becomes an easy interception right there for number eight, Peter Rayford. First interception suffered by Alfaro today. 36-yard line now. Boy, that Bronco defense has been out there a lot, Pat. And they haven't had much time to rest here in about the last 10 or 15 playing minutes. Mooney looks like he's coming. Here he comes. Kessel not about to sit on that lead. Still passing incomplete to Delangelo. And it's second and 10. The two corner people that time, O'Leary from the near side. And number 34, Mooney. That's a real Irish combination, isn't it? When you got O'Leary and Mooney coming after you, you better unload. <laughs> Head for the city limits. 10.26 to play in the game. Santa Clara trails by five. 26 to 21. Bill Kessel. The Broncos have not come up with the interception, nor have they forced the fumble if they could recover yet. Kessel now with 24 touchdown passes this year in 11 games. Over the middle, open McLean. He's brought down by Zinda, but that's a gain to the 30, third down and four. Dave Ramona coming inside on the blitz that time. Northern Michigan is just doing a great job, Pat, of picking those up. They have really done a superb job of blocking for Kessel, and when there has been a breakdown, Kessel's not afraid to leave the confines of that pocket and freelance it himself and in many ways he's more dangerous when he does that third down and four this would be a difficult field goal for northern michigan if this pass is incomplete i'm assuming they'll pass and they will Kessel. receivers Marana slips and falls incomplete fourth down on the 30. now this is going to be from the 37, it'll be about a 47-yard field goal attempt if that's what they choose to try. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, Andy Schatzman did everything but tackle Greg McLean at the line of scrimmage. They took him right out of the pattern. The officials did not see it, did not call it. Kessel missed on the passing attempt. Here comes number one, Tony Geller. I would be surprised if he could reach it from here. The ball is on the 30. The 37-47. Ball is right in the middle of the field. He might have a chance, Pat. He's going to have to compress this football to make it move that far. Geller has had two field goals today of 46 and 33 yards. It's up. It's no good. It's short from 47 yards. That one landed just barely short in the end zone. So the ball comes back out to the 30-yard line. The Broncos have it first and 10, and the Broncos dodge yet another bullet. That was just about a replay of the one that Geller kicked from 46 yards, Pat. He can reach it from 46. He can't quite make it from 47. <laughs> Nine and a half minutes to play. Santa Clara has suffered a fumble on a punt return and an interception in the last five minutes, but it hasn't really cost them. It cost them a field goal, and that's it. High formation. Let's see if they run it on first down. No, they're going to pass this time. Otterson, the intended receiver, makes the catch to the 39. That was an interesting pattern that time as Parmalee and Page go to the wide slot left. Then they come back the other way to the tight end, Otterson. Otterson's a fine athlete. Pat, watch him fight for the extra yardage here. He's not going to go down or be turned back. He's going to get the football up there within about a yard of the first down. Otterson has caught 
A total of six touchdown passes this year, including one earlier today to cap the first scoring drive for the Broncos. Second down and a yard. Parmalee near side, Fletcher far side. Second and one. Running play, Tyrone Forte, first down and then some to the 44. First and 10, the clock stops on the first down. Just under nine minutes to play. Santa Clara trailing by five points here. It's been all you could ever hope to see in a football game here today. Great passing offenses, some superior defensive efforts. Fine kicking and punting. How about another rematch between, another rematch would be a little redundant. How about just a rematch between <laughs> Cal Poly and Santa Clara? for all the marbles a week from now. Wouldn't that be something? The winner of this game will play in the semifinals. Alfaro gets away. Alfaro may run. No, he throws to Page. A clutch catch by Greg Page. He's still on his feet to the 36-yard line of Northern Michigan. Alfaro just barely behind the line of scrimmage when he passed that football. He thought about running, Bob. That pass looked like a monarch butterfly heading south, Pat. It's just kind of a little flutter ball. <laughs> but Page was there to make the catch. Alfaro did a great job of eluding the pressure. Looked like he could have run for about the same yardage. There you see the results of a great passing afternoon for Dave Alfaro. Less than eight minutes to play. The ball on the 36-yard line of Northern Michigan. Normally far side, double coverage. Here comes a blitz. Alfaro in trouble. Alfaro running. He's going to keep this one. Alfaro is going to be hit, but he gets three yards out of bounds. Dave thought for just a moment that he might try to turn that up inside and take a shot at the first down, but discretion was the better part of Valor right there as he turned it outside. He will watch him. He'll dip his left shoulder right here like he wants to go up inside right there and then decide, whoops. Tom Taylor, number seven, made the hit. It's second down, a gain of four yards on that play. Second and six. Parmalee, far side, wide split, double coverage. Here comes a blitzing linebacker. It's a draw play to Forte. Tyrone Forte to the 25 for a first down. First down. Tyrone Forte from Bellarmine High School. Gained 853 yards this year, Bob. Mercer Bryson. They're even putting the backs into that clip now. You saw Bryson right on the left side of your picture getting picked off there. As Northern Michigan letting it all hang out defensively now. Trying to stop the Broncos in what is becoming a relentless march, Pat. Doing it by the run and by the pass as Page is sent to the far side. Parmalee to the near side. Single coverage on Page. Jim Lane stopped after a gain of maybe a yard. Second and nine, the Broncos keeping the ball on the ground here. Here comes a play from the sidelines. Pat Malley deploying Kurt Fletcher into the lineup, but he's got a play. He tells Dave Alfaro. Greg Page comes out of the game for this play as Bill Rademacher, the head coach of Northern Michigan, looks on. Alfaro trying to read that as quickly as he can, Pat. When they go to the blitz, they've got to go to man coverage on those outside receivers, and he's trying to pick that up. Second and nine. Alfaro to Parmalee, makes the catch on the 14-yard line. It should be good enough for a first down. It is first and 10 Broncos. The real bread and butter man, Harry Parmalee, Perfect pass by Alfaro again, right on the numbers. Well, I'll tell you, Parmalee is really competitive, Pat. He's one of those kind of athletes you just love to watch. You have such admiration and respect for him because he always seems to do it when you really need it. He's just a junior. He'll be back. He's from Menlo Park, California. Outstanding wide receiver. This is the fourth time this year he's caught over 100 yards in receptions. First and 10 on the 14-yard line. The Broncos driving for a possible go-ahead score. Parmalee again makes the catch on the five. He's trying to get away. Down to the two-yard line. The Broncos have a first and goal on the two. Well, I got into one of those kind of situations where they had single coverage. 
out there on formerly was Brian Saban as they had the inside blitz going that time. That left Saban with a big responsibility and Parmalee's tough to cover that way. Alfaro really read that one, Pat. He knew when he saw what was happening inside that, we, that he would have single coverage on Parmalee outside and delivered the ball to him beautifully. 26-21, Northern Michigan leading Santa Clara. The Broncos trying to wipe out that deficit right here. Lane and Forte. Lane up the middle. Lane, touchdown, Broncos! Taking the lead, a good second effort by Jim Lane. Maybe third effort, Pat. One, two, three, Jim. <laughs> that really was a triple effort shot, wasn't it? The Broncos lead 27 to 26. Five minutes and 20 seconds to go in the game. Make it 526 remaining. And now the Broncos are going for two. They figure the one point on the extra point won't really help them that much. If you get a two, though, that'll send it into overtime then should Northern Michigan kick a field goal. That's right. You want the three-point gap at least, so the single point doesn't mean a thing. And it could all come down, Pat, to that missed extra point. A timeout on this play evidently called by Northern Michigan. Attendance today is called 9,100, and there is not one of those 9,100 that isn't delighted to be here. Bronco fans have had their hearts in their throats most of the day as this game has gone back and forth. There are a few people here from the Marquette, Ishpeming, Michigan area, following their Wildcats from Northern Michigan University. On the sidelines, number 91, Mark Zabrowski. Zabrowski from East Grand Rapids, Michigan. Talking to the coaching staff. And he comes back onto the field. This is a mighty big conversion attempt here for the Broncos. They lead by one, 526 to play. Of course, if this is a good conversion, they'll lead by three. Pat, how do you like the passing statistics? Alfaro, 25 for 33 for 324. Yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Kessel, 24 for 40 for 313 yards. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. That's a classic, isn't it? 49 for 73 combined for 637 yards of passing offense. The receivers have been busy, but so has our statistician Al Woodlock as Dave Alfaro rolls out. Open page! Incomplete! Page was open, the pass a little bit behind him, the conversion fails. So the timeout with 5.26 remaining. Santa Clara 27, Northern Michigan 26. This book tells you how to cut your costs for food, medicine, insurance, and gasoline. This book can tell you how the events taking place in the world will affect you and your way of life. This book tells you how to get money from the government for housing, education, medical care, or travel expenses. This book can help you know just a little more about everything than the other guy. This book tells you what foods to eat to stay healthy and what drugs to avoid if you're sick. And this book can give you confidence, self-assurance, and a wealth of knowledge. This is the special Newsweek edition of Help, the indispensable guide for consumer information. And this is Newsweek. Help retails for $6.95, but it's yours free when you buy 24 issues of Newsweek for $15, only half the newsstand price. So call now, 1-800-453-9000. Get 24 weeks of Newsweek at half the newsstand price. And upon payment, your free copy of the special Newsweek edition of Help. That's 1-800-453-9000. It's toll free, and major credit cards are accepted. Five twenty-six to play. This is Pat Hughes along with Bob Murphy on the Sports Channel. One of the most enjoyable games that we have covered this season, Murph. Santa Clara leads by a single point. Five twenty-six to play. Look at that kickoff by Sullivan. That kickoff hits the crossbar, if you can believe it. And it's first and ten. Northern Michigan on their own twenty. You think Brian's a little pumped up, Pat? You'd have to say so, wouldn't you? 
You know, let's uh, review the scoring. The Broncos got out in front by a score of seven to nothing. Then it was tied at seven seven. Northern Michigan went ahead on a field goal 10 to seven. Then the Broncos led at the half 14 to 10. Then it was McLean taking a pass from Kessel. Northern Michigan out in front 17 to 14. Broncos came back with Parmalee. They led 21 17. Northern Michigan 23 21. That's the, extra, the missed extra point. Then Geller 26 21. Now, 27-26 Broncos. How's that? You counted those back, back and forth? The lead has changed hands seven times today. Kessel, a diving catch by Seibel. A beautiful catch. The crowd doesn't think so. Neither As Kessel <laughs> hooks up with Seibel again. Neither does this part of the crowd, Pat. I thought that was a clear trap the first time around. We get the benefit of a second look. Oh, yes, that ball was trapped. What do you say? I think the arms were there, but I think the ball hit the ground. Broncos have to dig a little deep now, come up with a little something extra. Blitz inside. Kessel gets rid of it to Marana, though. Marana trying to avoid shots, but he can't really do it. So a minimal gain of four yards. Make it... Uh, two yards and it's second down and eight Broncos trying to cross that defense up Pat sometimes they send the inside people either Ramona or Green they've got Mooney in there at a corner now McAtee number 65 still at one corner number 52 Zinda has been in the blitzing situation Zinda now flopping to the weak side McAtee almost always plays off the tight end on the strong side Second down and eight for the Wildcats. Kessel has been brilliant today. Another completion to big tight end John Casanova inside Bronco territory to the 45 and a half yard line. What a picture perfect pass that was by Kessel. Well, and then you had McAtee in pass coverage. You see, as the Broncos are trying to change it up, you've got McAtee committed to pass coverage on the tight end, and that can be a little bit of a mismatch, Pat. That's tough coverage. Casanova came into the game having caught 30 passes this year. That's his first completion, or his first catch, rather, today. 4.49 to play in the game. The Broncos lead by a single tally. But this one is far from over. A blitz, Kessel screen pass to Marana. Marana to the 40, to the 35, and to the 33, where Lundy upends him. That should be good enough for another first down, though. It is to the 33-yard line. Screen pass over the middle, the screen was. Normally, you'll see the screen go to one side or the other. This time, it was right in the middle of the field, and then the running back just kind of makes his choice as to where he wants to go. Clock running, four and a half minutes to play. have gotten their money's worth of offense today, you can be assured. Kessel being chased by Padilla. Kessel's going to run for it. Tackled on the play by Jeff Harrison, but it's a good gain to the 28, a pickup of five. Dave Padilla gave his all that time, Pat. He was really all out. <laughs> he had all the stops full. He had it in overdrive, and he still couldn't catch Kessel. And all the time, of course, uh, lineman running at full tilt is looking for that blind side block. That's a dangerous situation chasing that quarterback. They don't like that a lot. They like it when they catch him, but they don't like it if they don't. But they really made an error. Second down and five. Kessel, a quick pitch out to Delangelo. Lundy turns him in. O'Leary and Harrison get him. Harrison's a hitter, isn't he, Pat? He's been all over that football field today. Seems to have a nose for the football. With any pursuit, any penetration at all, Harrison takes advantage of it, comes up from the secondary, as you see right there, number seven. He's had a fine afternoon playing defensive football for Santa Clara. Here's the old cliche. This is a big third down play. It would have to be one of the biggest in the game. Third and four. Three minutes to play. Kessel looking for a receiver. I'll 
tell you, that is really a big sack, Pat. That could make, make the whole difference in this football game. The ball's at the 35. The field goal attempt would have to be from the 42-yard line or a 52-yarder. Look at the Broncos work on this. Look at how hard they work. Zinda, 52. Padilla, 60. They finally caught up with him. Tim Pistoresi, number 80, looked like he was the man who really brought Kessel to the turf. It's fourth and 11. Boy, if you've ever been to the dog races, you know they, they never let the dog catch the rabbit unless the equipment breaks down. It broke down that time for Kessel. And boy, they got after the rabbit, didn't they? Fourth and 11. Here's your ball game right here. Kessel is back looking for a receiver. Down the middle he goes. The Seibel knocked away and incomplete. The Broncos have the football. I think Seibel just missed it, Pat. I think he missed the football. That was a really well-thrown ball. That ball was thrown up there. It looked like he threw it up for grabs when he let it go. Had a little tail on it. But he dropped it right over the linebackers and Seibel just simply was not able to hold on to the football as he was jostled as he was hit. But it was a well-thrown ball. There's Kessel. Boy, is he giving it his all here today. The Broncos, all they have to do now is kill the clock to win it 27-26. How about this one? A minute 59 to play. Bob Murphy is going to be heading downstairs to talk with some of the players in today's fabulous game from Buckshaw Stadium. You can bet the Broncos will keep the ball on the ground. Tony Gahey, the big fullback, who has been a workhorse today. And now Northern Michigan calls. No, they don't call a timeout. The clock running, 147, 146. Santa Clara will take as much time as possible between plays. They'll keep the ball on the ground, which will continue, allow that clock, rather, to continue. 132, 31, a minute and a half remaining. The Broncos 90 seconds away from being in the semifinals. Alfaro to Tyrone Forte, running room to the 40, 45. That's a first down. That might do it. With a minute 16 to play. All Santa Clara has to do now is not fumble. And they've got the ball game. The ball is on the 46-yard line. The clock running once again after the timeout on the first down. Coming up on one minute to play in the game right now. Now look for Alfaro just to land on that pig skin. Of course, Michigan, Northern Michigan is going to be trying to tackle the football. Alfaro lands on one knee. And you can feel it now. The Broncos have got it wrapped up. Santa Clara is going to be in the semifinals of the NCAA playoffs. They'll be playing next week. Less than 30 seconds to go. Dave Alfaro, who has had just a fantastic game here today. Over 300 yards passing. And now, Alfaro jumping up in the air. That's the last play. Northern Michigan has no more timeouts. The Broncos have won it. The crowd going crazy. The Broncos' entire squad out on the field. That's it. The Broncos win it. incredibly entertaining football games ever played here at Buckshaw Stadium. Today, Santa Clara outlasted the Northern Michigan Wildcats by a score of 27 to 26. It took a touchdown by Jim Lane in the last five minutes to do it. And then the Bronco defense came up with really the big play of the game was the sack where Padilla and Pistoresi and Scott and Zinda all put a terrific rush on quarterback Phil Kessel, and they sacked him. And that made it fourth down and 11. It also pushed Northern Michigan out of field goal range with that sack, 
and ultimately that turned out to be the play which really gave the game to the Santa Clara Broncos. All right, we're going to take a timeout and catch our breath. The final score in a thriller, the Broncos 27, Northern Michigan 26. How would you like to have a career in television, not just ordinary television, cable television, one of the fastest growing industries in the country? Yale Cable has positions open right now in our marketing division. We're adding to our sales team, and there could be a choice spot for you. You will have paid vacations, paid sick leave, paid holidays, as well as an excellent medical program. Best of all, you'll have the opportunity to earn top dollar and marketing skills that will be extremely valuable in the marketplace of the future. Plus, you'll participate in Gil Cable's revolutionary Get What You Really Want program, which is a talk of the communications industry. If you want to open up a whole new world for yourself, Call this number, 998-7333, extension 260, and ask for me, Tom Tompkins. That's 998-7333, extension 260, and ask for Tom Tompkins. Call right now. There's a great job waiting for you at Gill Cable. Back here at Buckshaw Stadium where the majority of the crowd has spilled out onto the field to congratulate their heroes, the Santa Clara Broncos today. In unbelievable fashion, Santa Clara wins 27 to 26. The lead changed hands in the game seven times before Santa Clara hung on to the narrowest of one point victories. And we say that because Northern Michigan has a great offense themselves. They marched the ball right down the field after Santa Clara scored for the last time. Northern Michigan had a first down inside the 30. However, a big sack on a third down play by the Broncos pushed Northern Michigan out of field goal range. And then on the fourth down play, they were unable to come up with a first down and Santa Clara took over. They ran for one first down by Tyrone Forte and Northern Michigan had no more timeouts and the Broncos just ran out the clock to win 27 to 26. The Broncos winning touchdown was scored by Jim Lane. Jim really came on strong for the Broncos at the end of the season and he picked up where he left off at the end of the regular season today as he scored the winning touchdown. Lane gained 74 yards today in a tremendous effort. Phil Otterson, number 85, jumping up in the air, signaling touchdown, and it was Santa Clara's game to be won here this afternoon. Some other individual offensive statistics for Santa Clara today, and there were plenty of them, plenty of brilliant efforts. Dave Alfaro finished 25 completions, 33 attempts for 321 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception, which really wasn't his fault. It was a deflected pass. Parmalee caught nine passes for 127 yards, and we'll talk more about some stats. First of all, Bob Murphy has some happy Broncos. Murph, take it away. Well, Jeff Harrison's down here with us, Pat, and he's got a big smile on his face. At least you did, Jeff, a minute ago. The defense finally did it. You finally shut him down when you really had to. You know, all year long, uh, our offense has faced a lot of controversy. I mean, excuse me, our defense has. And uh, our offense has played super. And it just makes the season worthwhile to me. When it comes down to the final game, the defense came through. The defense pulled us through. You made a lot of hits today because they strung it out and got it out. They'd like to turn them inside, those inside guys. But once it gets outside, they string it out. You come up and make the hit. You did it about five or six times today. Well, what they were trying to do is, is we were playing with seven, which is a two deep zone. And I'm a safety. And I'm playing deep. And what they were trying to do was get underneath the zone. Tried to there's a, get there's a space they were trying to get underneath the zone, and I was just reacting to the ball and coming up. I was going for the ball. You doing. don't mind playing one more football game, maybe two, uh, do you? Two, all the way. We're going <laughs> right, all the way. Yeah. Number one, all the way. Pat, you take it. I may want it back here in just a minute. All right, Murph Jeff Harrison, a junior from Goleta, California. That's down near Santa Barbara. He attended Santa Barbara City College for a couple of years, and he is a junior. He came up with a magnificent performance today, making several tackles on running plays and also stopping a few pass plays by Northern Michigan as well. Jeff is quite an all-around athlete, as a matter of fact. He is from Dos Pueblos High School in Goleta, California, and he was a three-time high jump champion. All right, they tell me that Bob Murphy has another special guest. Murph? Hey, you 
Walking into the picture right now, Perry Parmalee, who caught a bunch of balls today, Pat. You've got the statistics, but a big smile. I think that pretty well tells the story, Perry. Yeah, well, it's just a team effort. You know, we stuck with it, and uh, we knew if we just stuck together and worked as a team, everything would turn out good. You had the touchdown pass about a foot into the end zone, and then you danced back out. You weren't going to let him touch you, huh? No, no, <laughs> just get in and get out. I thought the catch you made down here when you had single coverage and Dave gave you the ball outside was one of the best of the day. Could you yeah. feel that one coming? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a very well-thrown ball. And <laughs> now, do you have any preferences about the game coming up? Would you just as soon play Cal we're gonna Poly to, again? We're gonna have to, yeah, I would. I'd like to get You'd another like shot at them. We're looking forward to them. All right, Perry, thanks. All Congratulations. Right. Great right. day today. Perry Parmalee, Pat, back to you now for a minute. Okay, Murph, some other individual figures that were pretty impressive on the day. Uh, let's see, receiving, Otterson caught five passes for 49 yards, including the one touchdown, which got the Broncos off on the right foot today. I'm going to ask Al Whitlock what some of the other rushing figures were for the Broncos running backs. In a losing effort today, Phil Kessel was very impressive. He passed for 359 yards on 28 out of 45 and as Al Whitlock points out he had no interceptions today three touchdowns Dave Alfaro also had three touchdown passes for Santa Clara but it was really the kind of a game that you hate to see somebody lose because both teams played deservingly and the Broncos are very happy that they prevailed but you have to kind of feel sorry at the same time for the Northern Michigan Wildcats who came up with a great performance but against the Broncos today it just was not enough Santa Clara now we'll vault into the semifinals of the playoffs in NCAA competition, Division II style, and they will play either Cal Poly San Luis Obispo or Jacksonville State one week from today, and uh, that will be this Saturday as you're watching the game. Rushing today, uh, Tyrone Forte gained 52 yards. We told you that Lane had 74, and Tony Gahey had 60. Now, I think that was a big factor in today's game, the fact that the Broncos were able to run as well as they did against a very tough uh, running defense, at least, of Northern Michigan, who came into the game ranked fourth in the country in stopping the run. We'll talk more in a minute, but first of all, let's go back to Bob Murphy. Down on the field with Tyrone Forte, and the Broncos did do one thing that some people didn't think you'd do. You ran the ball today, and you ran it well, Tyrone. Yeah, their defense had averaged 92 yards against the rush uh, all year long, but we still felt we could run against them. So uh, the results are right there. If someone had said at the start of the year that your brother wouldn't be playing and Pettis Glow would be out and you'd be here uh, winning the first round of the Division II playoffs, would you have believed him? Um, no, our chances would have been <laughs> slim, but we got a pretty good team with a lot of spirit and, um, you know, injuries is just part of the game. and. We're here now, so just got to keep on going. Do you want Cal Poly again, or would you just as soon see Jacksonville State? I'd rather play Cal Poly again. Would it'd be good little for revenge. It. Would that yeah. catch up? Yeah, it'd be good for the publicity, right. too. All right, Tyrone. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, thank you. Tyrone Forte with a great game here today, Pat. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. Just a great day for Santa Clara football here at Buckshaw Stadium today. I'm not sure if Murph is going to want to talk to any more of the happy Broncos. And I guess not. So that's about all the time we have. I know you must have enjoyed this game because there was lots of offense, a lot of big plays, some great individual efforts, and both teams played magnificently well. The executive producer of this telecast was Jim Reisinger. The Sports Channel statistician is Al Whitlock. We'd like to thank Mike McNulty, the great sports information director, for all of his help all season long in covering Santa Clara football. And so, for Bob Murphy, this is Pat Hughes saying goodbye from Buckshaw Stadium once again in a thrilling ball game. The Santa Clara Broncos win it. The Broncos 27, the Northern Michigan Wildcats 26. presentation of the Sports Channel.